Welcome to my latest 10th edition Warhammer 40k battle report. This time, the Tyranids unleash a Crusher Stampede against the Thousand Sons. And we welcome back to the channel, Stylus. Say hi, Stylus. Hi, Stylus. Uh, last time we met, it was a bit embarrassing for me. <laughs> uh, how many turns did that last? Uh, for me, it lasted two turns. For you, two and a half. Brilliant. And so this time I said, look, you're coming back. Bring the pain. Yeah. Have you brought the pain? I've, I've tried to bring the pain. You tried to bring I've the pain. To, again, I, this, I'm affiliated fill, to Thousand Sons in this edition. Okay. Uh, I've done my best. Are the excuses rolling already? <laughs> is that what it is? Well, last time I didn't know about it and I rolled you over in two turns. I said, I'm sorry, I didn't know they were so powerful. So maybe, you know. This time. So it's a learning game. This time, new list, monsters, new codex. Are you scared? I could see the last game as you were forlornly picking up the last few models you have on the table. Your brain was already fizzing on how to beat Thousand Sons, so I'm looking forward to what you've come up with. Well, it's going to be a very... A new codex, it looks like. It'll be very embarrassing if this doesn't work out, right? <laughs> so we're playing standard deployment with Chosen Battlefield and Taken Hold. What does that mean? It means that there is uh, five objectives down on the battle grid. And look, one, two, three. There's a little cluster down here and you get five points for each primary objective that you take up to a maximum of 15 points from turn two onwards so scoring the primary objectives very very important secondaries will be pulling from the leviathan deck and then there's another cluster down here one two down this end so this could be a tale of two halves the battle mat is from urbanmats.com and this lovely terrain that you see in the middle of the table is from marchofwar.co.uk along with my objective markers. The ruins in the middle of the table completely block line of sight. That'll count as one piece of ruin. That'll count as another piece of ruin. And I'll be very interested to see what the big monsters of the Crusher Stampede can do as they rampage across this battle grid. Big shout out to all my subscribers and channel members for help keeping the lights on. And if you would like to become a channel member as well, then for $5.99 a month, which is cheaper than a supermarket meal deal, you could become a tier three channel member and that unlocks an extra video every single Wednesday, a Winter's Wednesday's battle report. So don't have lunch. Instead, become a tier three channel member. Okay, so this is just under 2000 points of a Crusher Stampede. So instead of getting the lethal hits for some models some of the time or sustained hits for some models some of the time, what the Crusher Stampede does is unlocks something for monsters. So basically, as soon as they take a wound, they get plus one to hit. And when they're below half strength, they also get plus one to wound as well. So monsters hitting on twos sounds really powerful. My mind automatically thinks of a way you can negate that. So, for example, when you pick on a monster, utterly kill it. And when you pick on another monster, utterly kill it. And if you manage to do that all the time, then they're never going to get their plus one to hit or plus one to wound bonus because they're going to be dead. The other thing that happens is in the other swarm, in the other detachment that was released in the indexes, there was a really useful stratagem called rapid regeneration, which gives you a six up feel no pain or a five up feel no pain within synapse. And the Crusher Stampede does not have access to that particular stratagem. So I have introduced one new model. I've painted one so far. <laughs> and that's the Psychophage down here. And the reason why he's in it is because he's a monster and has a five up feel no pain, but gives all uh, anything within six inches of it a six up feel no pain. Because I like my feel no pains. And that's what that does. And then we've got three units of Zoanthropes floating around as well. And what they do is give Tyranid units within six inches a six up and vulnerable save as well. So the idea is to have one of those units floating around with some of the big scary monsters that are de uh, designed to push up the middle of the table. Hopefully that will keep some of them alive around that uh, psycho phase there. Punchy one, a Harrow Specs, two Carnifexes punching away as well. An Acid Spray, Tyrannofex spraying acid all over the place, backed up by a unit of zoanthropes. And these zoanthropes have two types of psychic blasts now, which happen in the shooting phase. And one is anti-infantry and one is a one-shot LAS cannon, essentially. Strength 12 minus three, D6 plus one damage. It's got exactly the same stats as a LAS cannon, only it's only 24 or 18 inch range. It's only a short range thing. And the pink one is the neurothrope and the blue brains are the zoanthropes. That's how it works. 
right now. Three units of them. It also allows me to spread out synapse here or there because they're synapse creatures, just like the two units of warriors here are synapse creatures. In the backfield, two Tyrannifex shooting guns. Stylus beforehand in the index, these guys reduced all damage by one. Okay? So like a Redemptor Dreadnought, but they don't have that anymore. Instead, they have a once per battle, you can change the damage characteristics of an attack to zero. So if you get hit by something that does 10 damage, you can turn that once into a zero. That's nice. So they both have that, and that TFX there has that as well. It's not as broken as it is before, but it is still pretty good, particularly if you get hit by a straight shot. Say you're fighting against Eldar, and they've got one of those, I don't know, 28 wound, mortal wound shots that they do. Once per battle, you could just turn that off. So it might be useful against Eldari. Uh, the Warlord for the army is my Swarm Lord, Kevin. And while Kevin is on the battlefield, I get an extra CP. And also while Kevin is on the battlefield, he can point at the Thousand Suns at one of the stratagems that was used and make that stratagem one CP more expensive. It could be something as innocuous as smoke screen or even paying to interrupt a fight phase, something like that. Of course, he's an absolute beast with a two up save, a four up and vulnerable save, but he's only got 10 wounds. So I found that concerted anti-tank fire can bring him down. And then hiding underground, because they have deep strike, is two units of Ravenous. I found in Leviathan, there are many secondary things which are like pop up behind the enemy and deploy a teleport homer or get to the corner of the battle grid and investigate signals or blah blah, blah. there's loads of secondaries that require little units to be left right and all over the place and here's my two little units that can go left right and all over the place because they can deep strike but also if they're not in engagement range of an enemy in i think it's your fight phase or my fight phase but basically they can burrow back down underground again and go back into strategic reserve and pop back up so that's what they're there for. They're there to score secondaries while the monsters push forward, throw down as much firepower as they can and terrify the Thousand Suns and try and redeem me after the last fight that I had against side Stylus of his Thousand Suns. And this is 2,000 points of the Thousand Suns. You made a 2,000 point list. I did. On the dot, plus one internet point for you. It's really tricky. I haven't got any um, of those enhancements, by the way. Because okay. uh, I've only got one character, which is the Swarm Lord, and he's an epic hero. You can't give it to them. Okay. So Thousand Suns, tell the people what they do. I've forgotten as well. <laughs> what they do is, again, all the uh, the special spells have basically been turned into shooting attacks. So that's just, you know, if I do Psychic Blast, it's part of their shooting. But okay. in addition to that, they have what's called Cults of uh, Magic. Right. Uh, it was like, oh, kindred sorceries. There's, uh, basically, they have Cabal points. Cabal So points. each sorcerer, um, Demon Prince, some um, sorcerer champion generates a certain amount of cabal points in my command phase right and i can spend these until the end of my next command phase so it's my turn your turn i can spend these cabal points to make things happen they're basically like strats okay so and it's spells. basically like spells which are strats which are points how many points do you have here cabal points at the start do you know i don't know you don't know <laughs> we'll count so, up as we go <laughs> okay but so. as they die you lose the exactly. cabal That's points it. and then you've got less points to spend on cabal points slash strats yeah and the, okay. thing, yeah, the big difference between this and the previous Thousand Suns is they can never go wrong. You, um, there is no rolling to see if a spell happens, and there's no counter rolling to dispel something. So it's it takes away that element of uncertainty. You just spend your points and you make it happen. Okay, yeah. You don't have to roll to pass a spell, and I can't roll to deny the witch. They they go yeah. off. So it's basically like having extra strats to do psychic stuff. Is there a... Because the World Eaters one, they've got their eight dice thing, but they can only pick up to two. I see. Do you have that limitation, or you can pick as many as you want to? I can spend them. Again, some of them are very expensive. I could only spend them in one go, spending all my Cabal points. Some yeah. of them are quite cheap. Um, so, yeah, I can use them. Um, I just remembered. Hello. One of them has completely removed my armour, right? Yes, it is. That's not nice when I've got two upsaved monsters. Oh, that'll come in handy, yeah. yeah that, that is very expensive, in fairness. How expensive? That's the nine Cabal points. It so should that's be... like, spend it and then kind of anything else. Nine sounds cheap. It should be like 18, <laughs> double that. No, no. <laughs> but that's the thing your storm lord can't affect my cabals i can't affect your cabals. no so actually I've got, I've got a second wave of strats that your ability can't affect so i quite like that nice okay okay what have we brought uh, also the other thing the thousand sons have is right, yes. kindred sorcery so in my command phase i will select an ability to take effect of everybody either psychic weapons have lethal hits psychic weapons have sustained hits psychic weapons have devastating wounds i pick one of the three right only affect psychic weapons which in this is basically just characters um either their 
essential replacement for smite or their their force weapons. Okay. But there is a strat that can allow me to turn rubric or um, scarab cult kilometers into psychic weapons for that phase. So I can right. I can have psychic so shots. These guys. Not the flamers, sadly. They thought ahead of that one because right. having thirty d or three ten d six psychic shots would be much. But your their, their, their bolters could go into psychic weapons. Right. Not, not the heavy stuff, but the bolters can. The combi bolters and their bolters can. So if I need to have psychic weapons doing devastating wounds. Again, there's quite a lot of... Spend the there. strategy before it, and then boom. Boom. I like it. Okay. Right, what have we brought? Is that Araman? That is Araman. I like so Araman. He's we, a G. We displaced Magnus, and now Araman's taken over. Okay. Um, he's a special sorcerer lord. He'll be leading the uh, the rubrics with the flamers. Okay. Uh, his special thing is if he's leading a unit, each attack has plus one to wound. So plus one wound? Flamer attacks can be quite tasty. That's going to be very useful against monsters. I should think so. Um, and also, the uh, I mentioned the rituals. Uh, once per battle... He gets to spend one for zero cabal points, so he gets a free one. Like free remove free armor. Remove, free remove armor, yes, that's fine. Do you know what? I only just thought of that. He could do that. That sounds scary. <laughs> that's fun. Um, but I've gone easy on you because my exalted sorcerer, who's backing him up, is, uh, what's that? Good from the old favoured. Um, oh, so he is always my most unlucky uh, sorcerer and okay. generally never wins a battle, so excuses are already in there. So if you lose, it's not because of Arab man, it's, it's the because the of the unfavoured. Yeah. Right, However, okay. though, um, he is leading the other unit of Rubukai. Right. Um, he gives them all a four-up awards, um, invulnerable save. Um, does he? He does. And he called the awards it. I've been playing Age of Sigma. Uh, invulnerable save, so they all have a four-up. Also, uh, if he's leading a unit, he can return um, destroyed models. So on a two to five, I get one model back. On a six, I get two models back. Really? And if he rolls a 1, which he's not going to do this entire battle, the units have just d3 mortal wounds. He's not going to do that this entire yeah, battle. He's going to keep on spawning Rubikai back in, and he will do it completely perfectly because he's been practicing this for thousands of years. Okay, and he's joining another unit, and suddenly they have a 4 up and vulnerable save. Yes, and the ability to come back again. It sounds like an auto include having a couple of these guys if you're bringing Rubikai along. They're not cheap, but yeah, having stuff to leave Rubikai does seem like the other thing to do because Rubikai. They don't have all his dust anymore. They're basically just Chaos Space Marines with slightly right. better bolters. So if they don't have these uh, sorcerers to boost them. And there's a, a unit of 10 with the bolters and a unit of 10 with the flamers. That's right. Nice, okay. Who are these two big chunky fellas flanking Araman here? So instead of Magnus, I've gone for uh, twice as good. So I've got two Demon Princes now. Okay. One is a Demon Prince with wings. Wings. As you can see, one is a Demon Prince without wings. That's the pussycat there. Not wings. Yeah. Where, where's this model from? Uh, that is an Age of Sigma uh, Mind Stealer Sphyrinx. A what now? Mind, they want to say Sphinx, but for legal reasons, they call it a Sphyrinx. So, Sphyrinx. So it's a Sphinx spelt badly. Okay. <laughs> Um, so the one with wings, yeah, they have different abilities because the wings makes all the difference. Of um, course they do. The one with wings, this is quite fun, at the uh, end, was it now? So he's Aether Stride. Aether Stride. Aether Stride. So at the end of your turn, yes. if he's not engagement range, I remove him from the battlefield and right. put him back in reinforcements. Really? So he strides around. Okay. And the one without wings um, is, I can pick a unit and give him all the precision ability, which is probably not that useful given you have one character and he's not leading a unit. Yeah, that's but not going to help you. if you're facing or you want to assassinate, that's quite fun. But the other fun one is uh, friendly units, including himself, presumably, have, within six inches, have the stealth ability. Uh, it's himself, yeah? You're yeah. in range of your own aura. So, so yeah. within six inches, you just grant stealth? Yeah, you know, slinks within the shadows like a pussycat. That's strong. I like that. I guess, again, since they can't lead units, they've got to keep them alive some way. The thing about demon princes, though, yeah, uh, you can just target them and kill them now. That's the thing, yeah. But they have a four up and run now, I they think. Have a, they, and they always had a four up and run. Zinc always had four up and Oh, okay. so they well, was, of course they did. Yeah, of course yeah. they did. But um, yeah, so um, depends how long they last. That's why I've got two of them. See how they work out. Okay. We've got a unit of Zangle running around over here. Yeah, they, they come back. So I thought I'd give them a try. So I've got um, 20 of them. Okay. So a big old unit of them, led by, again, Mildred, the Zango Shaman. Can you lead them if you're on a disc? You can, yes. Any Anything with goat horns can be led by Zango Shaman. Nice. Um, they, they're not much good for us. Um, the fun thing about the Zango Shaman is, again, they offer a feel no pain to Zango units they're leading. Okay. So they've got a six up in van, um, and a, probably a five up feel no pain, I think. Is it? Um, it's pretty good, yeah, because were, she was leading the discs before. They can lead any kind of uh, Zango type unit. Okay. So they're mostly to get swarm an objective and, and try and take it. They, again, they're not as tough as they used to be, and they've got the most um, redundant ability, given that everything has to have an ability. If they are within range of an objective they control, there's a 50% chance they'll get an extra cabal point. What, why do, Why does every unit have to have an ability? I may well forget that just because it's not worth remembering. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they do look cool, though. Thank you. Yes, they look fun. Um, big unit of Terminators. Big unit of Terminators. Again, that's the, the beef at the back. So, again, they've got their infernal combi bolters. They've got a couple of uh, what we call Reaper, Soul Reaper cannons there, yep. some missiles. 
uh, Prospering Kopeshes, which is probably the most fighty unit I've got, okay. um, which still makes them the least fighty unit in your army. Um, but... Aren't those Kopeshes damage two now? They're not bad. I think they're always damage two in the right. edition. But uh, yeah, they're quite choppy if they hit anything. I suppose what helps them to hit things is they're being led by a Terminator Sorcerer in um, there. Yes. He can point to a unit within 18-inch range um, in the shooting phase, and each friendly Thousand Sons unit, so that's anything, um, can reroll hits of one. Nice. So he can point something to everybody dump in. Or points at his own unit, or... Well, no, he points out an enemy unit. Enemy unit. Anything in my army that shoots that a unit gets to reroll Ooh, one. So, so like can... a mini-oath sort of thing? Yeah, he puts like a on them, yeah. And then in the backfield. At the back, yes. I was the... very pleased having two large monsters in my army, and I'm glad you didn't bring anything in kind. <laughs> so these, no. are, these are the Mutilith Vortex Beasts. Um, they had a good run last time, so they may not last long this time, but they essentially have enormous cannons on their backs, yeah. or in front of them, and they have uh, a good in five up invalve, they have a feel no pain. So yeah, they, uh, they're they quite good. What's their feel no pain? They have a five up feel no pain and a five up invalve. Nice. So yeah. they're bigger, they're tougher, and their guns are better. And their and fighting's not bad either. In the last battle of Bort, they just... They wreck face. Yeah. yeah exactly. So uh, if you're out there and thinking about playing Thousand Suns, then you can't go much wrong by starting off with three Mutilith Vortex Beasts. And again, as Stylus has showed you, here's the Mutilith Vortex Beast. And this one is another one from Sigma. This is a Charybdis with a K. Charybdis with a K. So yeah, uh, raid the Age of Sigma range and you can get different looking and cooler looking uh, Mutilith Vortex Beasts out there for your collection. Any enhancements and things? The only enhancement is the uh, must take always. I've given the Exalted Source with the Umbralific Crystal, which is the redirect. So Redeploy. I, I redeploy. Take them off the battlefield and put them down in the reinforcement step. It's okay. Never leave without it. Now, looking at your list and looking at my big monster list, I still have no idea how this is going to go because <laughs> Fighting Thousand Suns is a bit like Fighting Smoke. Let's go on to the planet. Here we are after deployment. I put a big murder bucket in the middle of the battle grid and a Tyrannifex with a rupture cannon on one side and a Tyrannifex with a rupture cannon on that side. And there's some warriors and some zone throats which can bust forward and take that objective. And then some warriors and some zone throats down here are holding on to my home field objectives. But yeah, big murder bucket over here. And so Stylus has counter deployed by putting a lot of stuff down this side of the battle grid. Yes. Both of the Mutilith Vortex Beasts. So at least one of the rupture cannons won't be touching one of them. But they are facing this rupture cannon on this side. What else we got? This is, um... this is the, uh, the shooting one led by the Exalted. Right. Uh, here we've got the Terminators led by the Terminator Sorcerer. Okay. Got the Demon Prince on foot here. Yep. Araman leading the Flamer Rubrics. Right. The Demon Prince with wings. And along the flank here, we've got the Zangors and Zangor Shaman. Okay. This one, he gives out stealth. He does give out stealth. So yes. minus one to hit. Yes. But he's only in range of one unit right now. He is, yes. Are you sure you don't want to redeploy him anywhere? He's a bit more concerned with not getting shot himself. So right. So he's found a nice ruin to hide behind, and he'll give them stealth, and that's okay. Yes, because ruins, remember, this is one big wall. We can't see through it unless you're in it, and that's one big wall. It's very important to have large line of sight blocking terrain in the middle of your table in games of Warhammer 40k. Have you put anything in reserve? Nothing in reserve, holding nothing back. I put my two units of Ravnus in reserve, and uh, I'm getting used to the mission deck now. There is one where you've got to do actions, only within nine inches of the corner of the battle grid. So these things, I don't want them to move because okay. they're heavy. So if they stay still, they hit on twos. But I've made sure that both of the T-Fexes are right within nine inches of the corner of the battle grid in case that one pops up. And they've got big 48 inch range. So, and they, they can take it, they can take it. That's why they're out on the wing. The real plan is just to push forward with all of these and cause as much devastation as possible. But let's roll the dice here, must go first. After you, sir. Good luck. Good luck to you. That's a two. That's two. a two. I've rolled a one. Yes! It is a thousand suns. Zinch has proclaimed it's the thousand suns. Third one. Turns out that the thousand suns start off with 14 cabal points. And here are their orders. Kill Kevin, the swarm lord. And kill things. Just, just kill, kill, kill. Here we are after the thousand suns movement and command phase. Both of the mutilid vortex beasts are moving up so that they're in range of this Tyrannifex on the flank here. Uh, one of the units of Thousand Suns have moved forward, so they're within three inch range of the objective on the left flank. And down here, this unit with the Terminators is moving forward as well. The demon staying close to them, but behind the ruin, so that cover has uh, that unit has stealth. 
which is minus one for them to get a shot at and the demon can't get shot at because it's on the other side of the barricade. Araman's moving up here with one unit of Rubakai and then down this side, the unit of Zangors advance. Then we start the shooting phase and Cabal points were spent on Temporal Surge. Temporal Surge, yep, so that allows them to make a normal move. So they advanced first and then just shove a little bit closer. Closer to this objective over here. Trying to look tempting to get shot at, yeah. Okay, you want me to shoot them? Yes. I'll be happy to oblige. Where, where else are we going in the shooting phase? Well, we um, were starting the shooting phase, I spent a stratagem. Right. And then I used more Cabal points to basically, it says, you can you spend this to spend a stratagem of zero CP. Okay. So I get to do two strats in the start of my turn. Okay. Nice. So what I'm doing is, I am doing the um, Ensorcelled Infusion, right. which basically turns all their Inferno Combi Bolters into Psychic Weapons that are Strength 5. Nice. So I'm pointing it at that. At the Harrow Specs. And that's what I'm going to shoot at, and to help me with that, my Cabal Free Stratagem yes. is going to be Devastating Sorcery. So each time a model in the unit makes a Psychic Attack, I can reroll the Hit Roll and I can reroll the Wound Roll. Ooh. Also in your command phase, you pick a thing for your psychic weapons to be, and you pick lethal hits? I pick lethal hits to get through. This is my kindred sorcery, so until the end of my next command phase, um, my guys will have um, critical hits will be lethal hits. Okay. And then because they now all have psychic weapons, that's uh, a lot of guns shooting in at the Harris Rex. So hitting on threes for the Inferno Commie Bolters. And okay. lethal hits we're going to look out for. Okay. Ooh, like that. And then you get to re-roll because of your thing. I get to re-roll everything because the psychic. So, I, so you can fish for sixes. I think I may as well fish for sixes because right. you're so tough. Yeah. And oh, there's another six. six. Strength five versus toughness eleven. Running on sixes. Yes. And first, the thing that makes me reduce your armor also uh, is out of range. So and then re-rolling everything because re of something. Because of the psychic. So just that many hits. Go for it. Minus one. Minus one. Uh, four up saves, and then it has a six up feel no pain because it's next to a psychophage and takes two wounds. Power Specs is on 12 wounds remaining. Okay, and I've got the missile rack coming in. Yes. These are not psychic, so they're just hitting, and I don't get to re-roll them because they're not psychic. Okay. And then they will probably wound on five. Toughness 11. Strength 8. There's it? a wound, AP. AP, well, strength 10. Um, That's eight. probably a save That's on a, a six. Save. It's minus two. That's definitely a save on a six. Okay. Hmm, so a lot of spells, a lot of magicery, but uh, only two wounds put on that Harrowspex. Magicery? Magicery. That's, that's a word now. Leger Domain was the word you're searching for. That's a lethal hit. And okay. You can rule it because he's part of the unit that has psychic weapons. This is the sorcerer. This is the sorcerer. So, so that hits some wounds. Yep, yeah, minus one. Um, I fail that. One damage? One damage. And I fail my feel no pain. Anyway. Okay, it takes three wounds. Moving down the line, reality blinks and flickers around the mutilith vortex beasts as they summon power from the warp and smash it down into the Tyranifex over here. What do they do? I have three options for guns. I'm going for the enormous one, of which I have one shot. If okay. it works, it's great. Uh, one shot from this one to start with, needing a three. That's a miss. Yeah, I spoke too soon. Okay, that's that dealt with. Second one, needing Six. a three. It that's hits. a hit. Okay. Strength. Strength is 18. Toughness 12, that's nice, I like it. That is a wound, AP. AP is minus four. Minus four, so it has a two up save normally, so I need a six. That's a six, I'm absolutely fine. <laughs> so the warp energy just blasts into the carapace of the Tyranifex, but doesn't bury through. And interestingly enough, that is the end of Thousand Suns, turn one. Everything is out of line of sight or range. So at the end of turn one, the Thousand Suns pick up Zero points. Stylus is ditching Assassinate, so he's going to get an extra CP at the end of the turn. And he has put himself on two of the primary objectives right at the back of the battle grid. But now the Crusher Stampede will surge forward in Tyranids, turn one. In turn one, I gain an extra CP because Kevin, the Swarm Lord, is on the battle grid. And here are my two orders, Assassinate, kill a character. That's going to be really tricky because I can't see any of the Demon Princes and getting through an entire unit of Thousand Suns to the character underneath. Well, that's going to be really hard to do as well. And Storm a hostile objective and the only objectives controlled by the Thousand Suns are right on the other side of the battle grid. So my two objectives are going to be really hard to score as well. Maybe it will be a 0-0 zero, zero turn one game, which we haven't seen in uh, 10th edition yet on the channel. Here we are after the Tyranids movement phase, the two rupture cannon terran effects is staying still on the right and the left and the big snowball just moving straight up the middle of the battle grid. I'm not going to be in range with the acid spray terran effects there, but what I've done 
is keep all of these models in range of the six up Furno Pain from the Psychophage and the six up Invulnerable Save from the Zoanthropes because turn two is going to be brutal. Just as uh, the Thousand Suns didn't have very many guns in line of sight and range, I don't have all of this in line of sight or range yet. Um, Kevin is stepping forward through the archway there. Uh, normally monsters can't go through ruins, but we've said, uh, and vehicles and stuff, but we've said our demon princes and stuff can easily go through these these massive gateways there. I mean, they're massive gateways. They're very large. They're very large. You can take your swords in. Uh, this unit of zone throats are in the ruin, and this unit of zone throats moving around here because I don't really want to shoot at Zangors over here, except with the death spitters from my warriors. I'd rather have the Zoanthropes far across the battle grid and hit the Thousand Suns and Araman's unit. So let's start there. Starting with this unit, essentially they've got las cannons. The psychic las cannons which hit on threes and only one of them hits and at strength 12, it wounds. There's cover, but minus two, so fives. No, no and it's d6 plus one damage. One, one gets annihilated and then there's the second unit just hugging the edge of this ruin here firing through the gaps in the buildings and that unit only hits once as well and wounds once as well and you fail the save and that nukes the second one two rubicai explode in balls of dust as we come across here to the warriors to their right firing death spitters into the zangors hitting on fours Strength five versus toughness four, needing threes to wound. That is four wounds at minus one into the Zangors. Okay, the six up invulnerable safe. Okay. Which doesn't kick off. And then Milbert gives him a five up feel no pain. Ooh, right Ooh. And two of them don't feel any pain. Only two of them fall over. So we've got another unit of warriors here, which are hugging onto my home field objective and another unit back here. This unit are out of range, but this unit burying their way through the trees. They are in range and they hit on fours. Warriors with shooty guns hitting on fours. Kind of sucks. <laughs> but the thing is what they have is they're sign ups and they can also fall back, shoot and charge. And they're quite cheap. So it is handy. Uh, four wounds at minus one, but plus one because of cover. Is it just six up and buns on them? No six up what? and buns all day. Okay. <laughs> Feeling okay. of the pain? Uh, again, two of them feel the pain. So four of them have died so far. While we're on this side of the battle grid, I'm going to chuck the eight Stinger Salvo shots from the Tyrannifex into them. But the two big anti-tank guns on the Tyrannifex are just going to have to shoot a thousand subs. Because <laughs> <laughs> you count deployed all the way over here, which is a really good tactic. Um, threes to hit with the Stinger Salvos into the Zangors. And that is five hits and... Four wounds, AP dash, but they just have a six up and vulnerable save. Does this cover as well? Then? Uh, it doesn't improve your armor save above your thing. Okay, so my thing is going to be six up anyway. Yes. So and one make one of them. Five, few feel no pains, and fives. No, I see another two die. Okay. Pattern here. So each round of shots, killing two, then killing two, then killing two. Next, rupture cannon firing through the trees straight down to Araman. This unit is heavy. So it hits on twos, and of course I miss once. <laughs> <laughs> it's strength 18. Okay. It wounds. It wounds. It'd be minus four, but minus three, because loads of cover Can in Zeke the way. Can protect with my invulnerable save? It cannot. No, 2d6 damage. One of them takes five damage. There you go, you got it. Six angles, 3,000 suns. That's okay. That's a good start. <laughs> Moving across to the middle. None of this stuff is in range or line of sight yet. So no shooting over here. So the last thing left to fire is Tyrannifex number two, firing down at these Mutilus Vortex Beasts. Two straight shots on twos. It's strength 18, where is their toughness? Toughness 10, shooting at this one, by the way. Okay. Actually, no, yeah, yeah, that one. We'll shoot at that one. Toughness 10, threes to wound. I'm gonna CP that. <laughs> <laughs> Two wounds. Two wounds. AP minus four. AP minus four, okay, so I'm on my five up in one save. Okay. These protects. So the Tran effects and the Mutilith Vortex Beast are having a gunfight right on this very edge of the battle grid and no wounds caused on either side, even though shots, anti-tank, wall destroyer killing, titan killing weaponry is going backwards and forwards here. No damage caused on either side, but more than that, I haven't stormed a hostile objective and I haven't assassinated anyone either. So at the end of turn one, it's zero points each. Um, 
as we go to Thousand Suns, turn two, are you, I don't, you're going to get five, ten on the primary. Okay, that's it. There's no battle shocks to take. It's, it's zero each. Thousand Suns, turn two. Thousand Suns pick up ten points on the primaries. Ten nil. You kept no prisoners. I did, yeah. Kill stuff Something because, yes, yeah, so, I mean, if you don't kill stuff, then you're <laughs> probably going to lose. And storm a hostile objective. That will be my home field objective or the objective that the Harris Specs is stood on top of. This Thousand Suns army that Aaron Man is leading is a very medium range army. But after two turns of movement, most of the guns are now in range of the Tyranid army. There's an objective that the Harrow Specs has stood on that you want to storm. I don't want to storm it. The cards want me to storm it. Okay. I don't know why Zinch is telling me to run forward into the teeth of this army. But, yes. you know, you've got to do what you're told. <laughs> so both of the Mutalic Vortex Beasts coming round this way. Yeah. Uh, the demon that provides stealth is here. You advanced him up. Yes, so he won't be charging this turn, but he's now kind of blocking the, uh, the Terminator, so my shooting base is still intact so far. He's okay. giving them stealth. They have an ability that reduces the wounds too, which we can come to when it comes to. But yeah, he's basically ready for the next wave. Okay, forward. so there's going to be a lot of pain coming into the big fur ball in the middle. I do hope so. Meanwhile, there's a big cap until we come all the way over here. Uh, Iron Man's unit advanced because okay. they've all got flamers, their assault weapons. The Demon Prince has jumped up and over, so those warriors are in trouble. And it looks like you're lighting up some Zangors to assault a rupture cannon to Radifex. Yeah, if I can get him and tie him up and you spend the next four turns just rupture cannoning Zangors off the board, I'll live with that. Okay, sounds like a good trade to me. I think it's only a seven inch charge as well because Mildred was able to jump forward and uh, yes. close the distance quite some bit as well. So a lot of pain coming down the left side, which will be very interested, but over on this side, well, there's some trickery, some cabal points as we go onto the Thousand Suns shooting phase. Spending Cabal points, telling people what you've done, what are we doing? Okay, so I spent five Cabal points on Temporal Surge. Yes. I can make a Thousand Sands unit move for its normal move. Right. So now we have a unit here that is within an unfeddable charge. Assuming okay. Assuming anything's left there. We've also spent another five, this will be the start of the shooting phase, taking away his saving throw. This is the nine uh, Cabal point, um, what's called Gaze of Fate? We've fixed the good one. It's on the Twist of Fate. It's twist the one, of Fate. It's the one that used to remove things. A Twist of Fate, no armor saves allowed for that anymore. Why are you picking on the Psycho Fate? Because he's given away a Feel No Pain buff everywhere, so we want him to go first. You want him dead. With that in mind, the Terminator Sorcerer in this unit yes. will also point to that and say every Thousand Sands unit shooting at it can reroll a one. I like it. So, spending a CP on Ensorcelled Fusion, making these weapons psychic. And strength comes to five. And strength comes to five, and you're going to be re-rolling all hits and all wounds the, into the Psychophage. The devastating sorcery. And lethal hits are a thing. And lethal hits are a thing. I love all these overlapping combos that you can do with Thousand Suns. You see, when it went from ninth to 10th or 8th, we were worried that they'd lose some of their source, some yeah. of their complexity. No, there's, there's definitely been simplificated. Simplified. Yes, simplified. that's a word now. Yes. <laughs> but there's still combos, there's, there's still, still things. There's still stuff you can do, yeah. And because there's only six strats and six cabal, or five or six cabal things, yeah. at least you can keep them in your head and you know what you do. I mean, last time, how many psychic spells did they have? 18 or 19 different psychic powers and you know, three pages of strats, of which some were very situational that you'd have to carry in your head for Brilliant. some situation. So at least here, no, you know what you're doing. You've got bolters, make them right. psychic. So what we're saying is, a Thousand Suns used to be like PhD level to play, but now it's more like your A levels. Absolutely. Not going to go down <laughs> tough. Good luck, kids. <laughs> right. Okay. So freeze to hit. Freeze to hit. Rerolling ones because he's been marked and. But you're rerolling everything. Anyway. Rerolling everything. Yeah. Wow. And so you could fish for the sixes again I if you want to. Think once again. Because you're strength five, so yeah. you will be wounding on fives. And let's on fish. On toughness nine. Let's fish. But sixes are lethal. Then five to wound with the rest, and then re-roll all of these That's as well. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. You're and doing well. Re-roll these. Nice. This is very good. Look at that. Only four drops. Uh, what's the AP? AP is minus one. I beat him though. He has no armor. I he has no armor. armor. So you just take it. These are your feel no pains. Okay. I took his armor. Yeah, you took your armor. Okay. Five up, feel no pain. He gives out a six up, but he's got a five up. He's got ten wounds. Good luck. Woof. That was good, wasn't it? <laughs> what? That, he, only, he only takes five. These dice are available. For me These dice here. are available. There's still some left. I think I've got too many, but email me at winters40k at gmail.com and I'll let you know how you can buy some. Two Reaper Cannons coming in as well. Soul Reaper Cannons. He's got five wounds left. Okay. 
Uh, so these, to hit. these I can reroll ones, but yes. they're not going to be critical hits because these are don't count as psychic. It was just the combi bolt as a way psychic. Right. Okay. So just regular hitting here. Okay. Okay, that's not bad. I can reroll that one because that's a different ability that the sorcerer pointed towards. Right. It to say reroll that one. But they're still lethal, right? They are. No, they're they're not lethal because because they're, they're not psychic. Not psychic they're just right. regular guns. Okay. So now I have to wound you. Uh, Strength six. Toughness nine. The needing five. Come here. Six is a devastating. Just one devastating. I don't feel the pain. It's on four left. Wait, there's more. There's more. I have heavy missile racks. Right. Two of them. Yep. They're coming in too. How many have you got left? Four wounds. These are flat three, so I need two of these they? to get through. Okay. Okay, here we go. So, hitting on threes. Okay, I can reroll the one because of the thing. Right. These aren't any kind of psychic, so they all go through. Okay. They have strength ten. Toughness so nine. Wounding. Oh, I can wound you on threes. Yeah. Happy days. That's Except for that. <laughs> <one wound. laughs> it's not gonna it's not gonna be enough, is it? No, it goes straight through. But I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to I've got a command point. You're I'm gonna have to do it. You get a command point here. I'm, I need to kill me to die. Okay. Threes. That's uh, a bit cocked. That's uh, uh, right. Ah that doesn't wound. Feeling of the pains. It's on one wound remaining. <laughs> <laughs> Right, the demon prince, the kitty is a gun. Yes, the how does How does he have a gun? He spits a huge hairball. A hairball coming yeah. out for the win, infernal or something. Infernal cannon, not psychic, surprisingly. Right. So, but I'm rerolling ones because that effect lasts. Okay, uh, two's to hit. Two's to hit. Everything hits. Everything hits. It is um, only strength five, though. Uh, five's to wound. Five's to wound. It's dead. There's no EP. You can still go for your armor. It's damage two, so give me a couple of fives. I've got two fives there. Okay, straight two through. Two damage each. I don't have any armor. Let this be the one. So four, five up, feel no pains. That's a dead psychophage. Does it deadly demise? It does Ooh. deadly demise right in the middle of my lines. This is going to be painful. The psychophage exploded and did a mortal wound to everyone within six inches of him. But fortunately, because I'm crusher stampede, that's basically made them more angry. <laughs> now they're all wounded. They're going to hit one better. Next, we're firing this unit of Rubikai. In at the how respect, stood on that objective there. Yes. So it cost me all my command points and a lot of my cabal points to get rid of the, the psychophage. Yeah, you got rid of the feel no pain, that's fine. Yeah, and I've made everything else better. So, you know, what could go wrong? But yeah. I'm going to start this time with the uh, the psychic powers, because I so forget them. Okay. The exalted sorcerer, the ill favoured, will begin with his astral blast. Right. D6 attacks. Ooh, that's a fat six. That. The races. That's some good witness head right there. <laughs> Hitting on twos, and it's a psychic attack, so we've got to watch out for criticals. No, uh, no criticals. There, they all hit. Okay. Uh, it's strength six, so wounding on fives? Yes. Oh, that, that is it's four wounds, five wounds, five AP. Wounds. AP is minus one. A no, bit, uh, minus two, sorry, D3 uh, damage. Five up saves. I only make one. That'll be four D3 damage. Come on, your favourite. Wow. Is that just 12 damage? Yes. He was only on 10 left. On a 3, 6, uh, yeah. Uh, that's a dead Harrow Specs. It's not even hazardous. Not even hazardous. A thousand suns know their cells. spells. Right, does this one deadly demise? No. So now two massive monsters have been shredded and you've already stormed the hostile objective because Mutalic Vortex B7 OC of 4, Carnifex is of an OC of 3. So you've already controlled it. So the beast is turning around to face the foe and shooting at the Carnifex Brood. Warp Vortex. Uh, so I will hit on a three. They miss again. Second one, I'm going to try. Hitting on a three. That one misses again. This is great. Useless Vortex <laughs> beasts suck. Two miscast spells sputtering out from the Mutalith Vortex Beasts. And that is the end of the shooting phase down this side of the battle grid. But it was pretty darn effective. As we come all the way down to this side of the battle grid, where the second demon prince, and Araman, is looking at the warriors, the zoanthropes, and the tyrannifex. Turns out warp flamers are not assault weapons. <laughs> <laughs> so Araman's unit are not shooting in. Instead, we're going on to the demon prince, which is shooting out what now? We'll start with Mildred's mutating orbs. Mildred's, okay. Uh, she wears D6 to start with. They're going uh, to fire at the... We're going to put things into these guys. The zoanthropes. So we can beat these guys up. Okay, shoot zoanthropes, charge warriors. Yes. I like it. D6 shots. One shot. One shot. Uh, she will hit on a three. That's a hit. Actually, it's a two because of her inability, but that's a hit. Okay. Uh, they are strength nine. Wounds on a three. No. Doesn't wound. Okay. They are toughness five. Demon Prince's cannon. Two's to hit with Two's a Demon to, Prince cannon. Hits. Strength five for the cannon. Toughness five, yep. Yeah. Uh, we have four wounds. 
AP. Three wounds. AP is minus one. Two damage. Uh, four open vulnerable saves. Well, I take two wounds. One's on. One wound remaining. And that's the end of the shooting phase. Uh, very little damage caused down this corner yet, but we're on to the charge phase now. What would the Demon Prince, Demon Prince like to charge? Demon Prince take on the Warriors. Okay. Here we go. Uh, that is a three-inch charge. That is a fair charge. I have no clamp and... So Ooh, yes. that's painful. Zangles, do you want to go into the Tfex? Or into the Warriors? Well, no one's got that objective right now. No I one's got I, that. My plan was Tyrannifex. Let's do Tyrannifex. Because okay. I, I heard that noise you made, and I can see you pointing a rupture at my demon prince. It's, yeah, I really want to shoot. Now he's failed the charge, I really want to blast him with a rupture cannon. Well, that's not going to happen, and you'll find out why in your command phase. It's not going to happen if you make a 7-inch charge. Okay. And that's a 7-inch <laughs> charge. Here we are at the end of the charge phase, and the parlin. Uh, Mildred gets to fight, and 7 of the Zangors against the Tyrannifex. 3 attacks from Mildred's Shaman Stave. Okay. Psychic, so these will be lethal if I get criticals. Okay. Or oh, they'll be doing nothing at all if I get ones. 3 okay. ones. She completely misses. Zangor punching with their blades. Punching with their blades. They'd normally hit on fours, but a shaman in the unit plus is one to their hits. So nice. Threes. Okay. But nothing special. Any lethal these. or anything? No, they're just Zangor whacking away, not doing much until... Hitting them. with cudgels and spoons and things yeah. like that. Enchanted Zangor blades, thank you very okay. much. Okay. Strength is five. Five. Yes. Toughness 12. Okay. Two wounds. Two get through. Eight. AP minus one. So they are enchanted spoons. And there I take a wound. Have it. Oh, good. Now he's more effective. Now I'm pleased that you hurt him. Because he's going to be hitting on twos instead of threes now with his four powerful limbs. Strength eight, AP zero, two damage. So four wounds. Six ups. Four no. Five ups. And then one re-roll six. that one because it's two damage. Ah. Because you have the feel no pain. Maybe this wasn't the best to call. I tread on four of them. With that fight ongoing down in the corner of the battle grid, that is the end of Thousand Suns. Turn two, they have picked up four points for no prisoners for killing a couple of things. And of course, the Mutalith Vortex Beast has stormed this hostile objective. That makes it 19 points to zero in favour of the Thousand Suns. And it stops me scoring this objective wow. down here. In fact, the only five points I'm going to get is for the objective over there as we move on to Tyranids. Turn two. It's five points to 19 in favour of the Thousand Suns, and I need to storm the hostile objective, I kept that one in my hand, and bring down one of the monsters. Now, Stylus, once per battle, okay. I can call upon the Shadow in the Warp, okay. and everything in your army takes a Battleshock test. But the thing that I'm most interested in is here, Mutalith Vortex Beast. Okay. The leadership is six, because if you fail this, then I actually get an extra five points. That's nice for you. Okay? Okay. Shadow in the Warp. You don't fail it. Right, let's do all the Battleshock tests for all the other stuff off camera. Here we are after the Tyranid movement phase. Big Tyranifex staying still over here wants to straight shot one of these Mutalith Vortex Beasts because I have. Bring it down and I'll get points for every single one of those I kill, including demons because demons are monsters as well. So we're moving around this way. I've technically already stormed this hostile objective, which is one of my secondaries because I'm uh, outnumbering with OC here. But the plan is kill second Mutalith Vortex Beast this way and uh, Carnifexes go charging up and take on a Demon Prince. Not sure if that's a good idea, but let's find out. Uh, down this side of the battle grid, I've got a lot of guns lined up, ready to fire down at this Demon Prince and Araman's unit. And the only person who failed Battleshock across your entire army was Araman. Yeah, he's I'll feeling less confident about the plan. <laughs> well, maybe he saw something coming. He's like, oh no, this is going to go horribly wrong. Because currently I am 14 points behind, but I've spread myself out, so I'm across three objectives. And if the, I manage to pull this off, dead Demon Prince, dead Demon Prince, dead Mutalith Vortex Beasts, suddenly the pendulums will swing the other way. So we're going to come down here to my big scary monster of doom. It's going to fire the Stinger Salvos in at the Zangors, okay. but it can fire out of close combat now. Yeah. So we're going to fire my Rupture Cannon in at your demon prince. Okay. The interesting thing about this is I'm heavy, so my three goes to two, and then you're minus one to hit because I'm firing out of combat back to three, but I'm wounded back to two. I'm glad about that. So I'm hitting you on twos. Okay. Um, and I hit you both of the times. It is strength 18. I think that's a wound. Toughness 10, that's not a wound, that's just one wound. 
Okay, many AP I take it? So uh, AP minus four. Four up in vulnerable save. Like that. Then the Stinger Salvo went in and killed two of the Zangors. Okay, we're coming across to the zone tropes. Okay. Operation killed the Demon Prince is still in effect. <laughs> Here's three Psychic Glass Cannons to the face. This time I hit all three times. Last time I only hit once. Strength 12. Wounds twice at AP minus three. Okay, four up in Venice save again. That's two get through. D6 plus one each. Okay, we'll use a stratagem as you roll. What? What? I've got a strat. You got, I've got a strat for that. I've got a strat for that. My strat is destined by fate. Right. I do it when a saving throw is failed for a thousand cents psycho model. I change the damage character damage characteristic to zero. Okay, so these both get through yes. and one of them becomes zero. Yes. And then this is D6 plus one. And that is seven <laughs> damage. It's a critical hit. The winged demon prince is on three wounds remaining. He's pounded, he's reeling, and he's caught in a crossfire as three more psychic last cannons come down to him, plunging from the top of the ruin, and they all miss. Oof. Zone Throat's getting cocky there. Thinking <laughs> them they know magic, but uh, what knows magic better than a Zeech demon prince? Okay, death spitters for the win then. Okay. Shooting you, point blank range, to the face, on fours. The downside here is... I need sixes. I get a six at minus one. That's right, a three up save. There nope. Okay, unit number two doing the same thing. Uh, four hits. One more. Take a wound. Take a He's wound. down to two remaining. And then unit number three in the backfield. This does mean I'm pouring lots and lots of firepower into a demon prince and not into Aramon's unit, but that's a problem for next turn. Uh, fours to hit. Ooh, Sixes to wound. One more wound. Which gets one again. more to up. He's on one wound remaining. And I don't think there's anything left around this side of the battle grid that can actually shoot and hurt him. Am I actually going to charge him with some warriors? That sounds like a terrible idea. But he's on one wound left. Do you have any CP to interrupt? I've spent the last one trying to keep him alive. So what you're saying is there's a chance. There's always a chance. You're telling me there's a chance. Okay, let's go across to the other side of the battle grid then. One Tyrann effects was failed to take down a Demon Prince, but can this Tyrann effects one shot this Mutalith Vortex Beast over here? I'll put the Stingus Albos into him as well because I'm not confident. <laughs> I hit once. I'm gonna CP that. I hit twice. Threes to wound. I wound twice. Five up in then saves. Did it last time? Not this time. Okay, each of these is 2d6 damage. How many wounds does he have? He's about uh, 13 wounds. And a 5 up feel no pain. Five, feel no the pain. first shot does 11 damage. The second shot does 7 damage. That's 18 damage. Shooting holes straight through his gut. But he feels no pain. I can do this. 5 to feel no pain. Ooh, yeah. That's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It's each his number. The rest is okay. Four wounds to get through. Here's salvos of the stinger variety. Everything hits. Uh, sixes though. Two wounds. AP dash. AP dash four. I think it's his armor. One gets through. Feel the pain. He do does feel, feel the pain. pain. He's on three, three wounds left. remaining. Can my last cannon see him? <laughs> I don't think my last cannons can see him. He's going to live. I think what I'm going to do is soften him up. For Kevin, my swarm lord, when he goes flying in there. <laughs> we'll put Laz Cannons in the second Mutalith Vortex Beast. Okay. And I hit once. <laughs> <laughs> and a wound. Okay. Minus three. Feel no, uh, five up in one? No. And this is D6 plus one. And that is three damage to the Mutalith Vortex Beast. Feel no pain. I feel the pain twice. Last thing left to fire, the acid spray from the Tran effects will splash all over the Mutalex Vortex Beast as well. And I get D6 plus six auto hits. At strength six, the acid will burn through on fives. Four at minus two. Uh, five up invert. Okay. Two, and then two damage each. Two damage each, so four feel no pains. That's two pains get through. Okay, and we'll do a little tickle with Stinger Salvos. And with that, that is the end of the shooting phase. Uh, I don't think I killed anything. Are you supposed to kill monsters this I'm time? I'm supposed to kill monsters this time. any monsters this time. I'm going to kill some monsters <laughs> this kill time. Some monsters. We're going to start off. You can't paint interrupt. This is the good thing. Yeah. The screamer killers are going to charge a demon prince. Okay. This is probably a bad idea, but yeah. they're definitely in. Okay. Crump, they go in there. Kevin, 
into a mutilif vortex beast. He's going six. This is definitely a good idea. This is going to be absolutely fine. But the worst idea I've got this turn is a unit of warriors charging a demon prince over here. This the is heroes. a horrible idea. Uh, they're a bit reluctant, but they are going <laughs> in there. Now, before we come back to this monster mash over here, we're going to go over here. Now, you know tank shock. Tanks can go in and they can shock things, That's and monsters nice. couldn't. Yes. Well, in Crusher Stampede, monsters have their kind of... They kind of have a tank shock now. It's called Massive Impact. Okay. And I'm going to play it now. One CP. You roll six dice, and for every four, it does a mortal wound. Carnifex is against your demon prince. Okay. And that is four mortal wounds. It's a massive impact. It's a very massive impact. And you know I said this was a terrible idea? Yes. I found another strat called okay. Rampaging Monstrosities. In the fight phase, re-roll all hits. Wow. So let's do that. Okay. Kind of effects with Scything Talents and Extra Scything Talents. Normally they would suck and hit on threes. Uh, fours, sorry. But they hit on threes because that unit is injured. And I'm re-rolling all hits. Oof. Like that. A strength nine. I'm winning on fives. I get two wounds. <laughs> Just two wounds at minus two, three damage a time. That's going to be my four up either way. Okay. One gets through. It takes three wounds. Okay. And despite crumping in there and going on a feeding friendly, frenzy, those carnifexes get that demon prince down to three wounds remaining. It's still alive. However, now we're going on to Kevin, the Swarm Lord, taking on a mutilith vortex beast. He's got eight attacks. He hits on twos. And he strikes nine. Ten. He needs five to wounds as well. And it does better. It gets three wounds through at minus two. Well then we damage that. Five invulnerable saves. Yes. Uh, and you make get through. That's six damage. Six damage. How many is on left? More than six. Oh dear. So I'm not gonna kill him. Can I feel no pain? Right. It takes one, five it takes wounds. Five. Okay, so that happened. I haven't brought it down yet. I haven't killed okay, any I'll monsters. Bring it down. Yeah. Coming over here. We'll admit to, to the this, warriors. As you were firing last cans at him, yes. I made a little boo-boo, it's early edition. The demon princes actually have different stat lines. Have they? The one with the wings is a little less tough because he's so flitty. So you probably should have killed him already unless I made my save. So kill him now and we'll just call it a wash. He is toughness nine, he is toughness ten. Okay. And otherwise well, they're demon princes. Yeah. A couple of things there. Why can't they just have the same toughness? And the other thing is, I'm certain that that's probably the first time anyone's ever made a mistake in a battle report. Do you ever make mistakes yeah. in battle reports? Um, I'm hitting you on threes with the warriors, okay? okay? Now I'm strength five, but because you're toughness nine, I'm winning you on fives. Okay. And then minus one, one damage. So four. Four will get through. Three up saves. Uh, it's oh, two up saves, so you're cutting through. So it's one damage, it's three up saves. Yeah. And one wound remaining. One Come wound on, little remaining. warriors, you one can damage. do it. They can do it. They That's do one it. wound. They can do it. But do you know what happens? What what happens? What happens? Okay, sit down and bear with me. Um, this, this is like Thousand Sons and Ninth Edition all over again. Can I stay stood up? Bad Ar news. Araman has a one-off battle ability. Once per battle. Where he can do a cabal ritual. Yes. For free. I have right. no cabal points, but he gets it for free. Okay. There is a cabal ritual that lets me do a stratagem for free. Okay. So I'm using Araman's ability to get a free cabal action to give me a free stratagem. And that stratagem is, the first time I fail a saving throw, damage is zero. What you're saying is I don't kill him. So what you're saying is it's like ninth where I explain a long way and say, well, you haven't done what you wanted to do, because zeech. So magic and bullshittery flickers across this battle grid. <laughs> and at the <laughs> end of the charge and assault phase from the Tyranids, I haven't killed anything. And they get to fight back. Demon Prince with a big sword. Smacking out of the warriors, he's got a three damage attack. He can strike or sweep, he's doing the strike. Okay. And this is a psychic attack, so the whole thing about lethal hits on criticals will apply. Okay. So hitting on twos. So that's a critical hit. Okay. It fails, and it's strength eight. Three is to wound. Three is to wound. Three. What's, what's the AP? AP minus two, flat three damage. Okay, so they have a four up save. Okay. What he's saying is I need sixes or they're dead. Indeed. They're dead. One Demon Prince managed to slaughter its target. We're coming across to the Demon Prince without wings, trying to slaughter the second target, the Carnifexes. Same deal, it's doing its Hellforged weapons. Okay. Unclipped claws, hitting on uh, twos. And again, that's a lethal hit. That's a miss. That's... Strength eight, toughness nine. Okay. Fives then. Okay. 
Of which there's two, so coming in at minus two flat three damage. They have a turn save normally, so fours. Ooh, I make the saves. So demon number two fails to even scratch the surface of the Carnifexes, but now we're on to Mutala Vortex Beast versus Kevin. It's using its big claws. Big claws. They look very big. It has one remote, so you've bracketed it down at least. So okay. It's going to be hitting on fours, not threes. Okay. It's using its Mutalith claws. Right. Um, which do much damage, so we'll hit you on fours. No, we won't. You hit me once. Wound uh, strength nine, wound you on... That that does wound me. Minus two, four damage. Four up and better was it? Four damage. Four damage. I'm okay. okay. I'm okay. Then we did the fight back in the corner with the Tyrannifex and the Zangors. One more Zangor died, and that is the end of Tyranids. Turn two. I fail to bring down any of the targets, but I'll keep that objective in my hand because I've got to start killing some of these big monsters at some point. I do get five points for storming a hostile objective making it 19 points to the Thousand Sons and 10 points to the Tyranids, but the demons are still combat effective. Araman is still yelling out orders and there's still a huge horde of sorcerers and bodies down here that can make an impact in Thousand Sons, turn three. The Thousand Sons pick up 15 points on the primaries, pass all of their battle shock tests, and here are their secondary orders, get behind the enemy lines, and extend their battle lines, hold on to their home objective, and one in no man's land. Here we are after the Thousand Suns movement phase, and you're pushing forward to take on the swarm down here. The Demon Prince then locked up with the Carnifexes because monsters can shoot in and shoot out of combat, and you're engaged with a monster there. So you can shoot in with this unit of Thousand Suns Terminators straight in at those monsters. It will be minus one to hit them though. And that unit of rubrics as well, which I knew would run so they could get guns down as well. So loads of shots lining up the Carnifexes is what I'm hearing. Yes. Uh, one Mutalith Vortex Beast stayed locked up with Kevin. The other ones move forward. Yet yeah, to lens a healthy blast or charge in. Yes. And then down this side down of this side. the battle grid, yes. you have got behind enemy lines. The Demon Prince has jumped back down there and the Zangor are already there. Where's he going? Well, he's going in there. So I mean, you could kill him in combat and then I wouldn't have to use behind enemy lines. So. He's going to go into the <laughs> T-Fex as well. He's got a better chance of killing the T-Fex and these guys do scrap okay. away. They're not doing too well. However, interestingly, he has flown over that unit and he has an ability when he flies over a unit. Has he? I roll nine dice. Nine dice? Nine, needs to remember. Nine dice. Okay, he's flown over the zone throat. He's flown over the zone throat. So some kind of sweeping attack. Right, yeah. Vomfries, ether strided through them or something. Okay, yeah, right. So uh, any sixes will do mortal wounds. Okay. So that. No sixes. I was going to say as well, like you can overwatch in the movement phase now. Would you like to? And see, I could overwatch down here, Laz Cannon, sixes to hit, try and kill that demon prince. But I feel like he's earned himself a chance. Oh, okay. So instead, I'm going to overwatch over here with an acid spray T-Fex. I'm also going to do this because it auto hits. <laughs> and I'm going to try and kill that Mutal Vortex Beast. Okay. And it's D6 plus 6 auto hits. So 12 auto hits on the overwatch. Here's the tricky part, however. Fives to wound. Oh, not that tricky. Not that tricky. Five up in van saves. Okay. Okay, Get two of them. That is eight damage. How many wounds is he on? I've got three left. Feel no pain. He feels the pain a lot. I take it down. Does he deadly demise? I bring it down. He, he doesn't does deadly demise. Oh, does that mean I score that deadly bring it down thing now? I have scored bring it down, but I keep hold of it because it's during your turn. A battle round is made of two player turns and I might kill another one <laughs> in your turn. It's nice. One big beastie down, and now cabal points being spent and strats and things. What are you doing? I'm spending nine cabal points on Twist of Fate, right. which means uh, they have no longer an armor safe. The Carnifexes. The Carnifexes. Uh, two up armor safes just gone. Just gone. Well, they rely on that. Okay. And I'm also keeping the lethal hits on critical wounds for the duration, because that's what I need against monsters. Right. That one that um, make you re-roll hits and all wounds, yes. that one, I increased the CP of that. I thought it was the one that made my weapon psychic. That one, that's yes. the one I did. <laughs> Swarm Lord, yes, I remember now. The Swarm Lord has an ability, which is I pick a stratagem that you have and it costs one CP more. Yes. And you use that one twice. Yes. So the second time you use that one twice, it's now cost two CP instead of one CP. Yes. The way to avoid that, though, is if you kill Swarm Lord, the Swarm Lord, then that goes. Yes, okay. So you're spending two CP? Have you got two CP? I haven't done that strategy. No, I don't have two CP, so I can't do it. Okay, brilliant. 
But we're going to come down to this side of the battle grid for the demon prince shooting the zoanthropes with his infernal cannon. Cannon. Cannon coming up, hitting on twos. Twos to hit, yeah. Okay. Everything hits. Everything hits. What's the strength of this? Strength six. Toughness five. Strength five, I tell the life. Okay, force to wound. Force to wound. Three wounds get through, it is minus one, two damage. Four up and vulnerable saves. I fail them all. Two damage each. Two damage each. There's only one left standing. So the Demon Prince just scores headshots with his Infernal Cannon, popping brains there, leaving the Neuro Throat remaining. So the Flamer unit, which was going to flame them, yes. we think about charging him instead. Yeah, we can take it. Instead, the flames are going to come in to the Warriors. Iron Man, uh, one attack, Psychic Stalk. Okay. That hits, and it's a critical, which means it's a lethal hit. Right. So you've got to save it minus one, D6 damage. I fail it. Five damage. Bam. One just gets ripped apart by Araman's brain. Leader of the unit is going to do his psychic power, which is Warp Smite. Okay. It's two attacks. Uh, neither one does the thing. And does now miss? It does miss with everything, so now it's just the flames, of which right. there are six flamers left. Okay, so 6d6 auto hitting torrent flamers for this number of hits. Strength four versus toughness five. Five's to wound. But uh, I can. What, right. what, what? Here we go, here we go. Here we go. Um, every time I make a range attack, I can reroll a wound roll of one. Can you? And I have an icon of flame, so critical wounds will come to them in a minute. Okay. Watch out for critical wounds. What are these ones I can Well, re-roll? those sixes are critical wounds. No, these are hits. Uh, no, you auto oh, hit. God, this is the wound. You're quite right. These are critical wounds. It improves the AP. Yeah, so you're re rolling these wound rolls of one. Just checking that if I'm within a range, we roll a wound roll of one, you're not an objective, are you? No. So, that's another critical wound. Right. And these... Is it fives I needed, wasn't it? Yes. So what do the critical wounds do? It improves the AP. So they're AP two. Does it ignore cover? It ignores cover because it's a flame. So sixes. Another one's dead. Okay. And then these are fives. Everybody's dead, Dave. There we go. Everybody's dead. So Araman and the Demon Prince are sowing murder down this side of the battle grid. But that's it for that flank. Now we're coming down here. Well, the last remaining Mutalith Vortex Beast is targeting Kevin. So previously, I've been going for the one-shot attack, the glory shot. Yes. Uh, and it hasn't worked out well. These, no. these fantastic Mutaliths have had a real stinker of a game. Yes. However, <coughs> it's all I can do now because the one I should be using is a blast weapon, so I can't shoot Kevin with it. Okay. So I've got to go for it. If I, if I hit him and you don't save it, it'll be magnificent. It will be. So it's on you. If you want this to be interesting, you know, just fairly Well, you've just got to roll a four because we're in four. combat. Exactly. You hit. We're good so far, so good. Okay. What's the strength? Strength 18. Okay. Threes to wound. Threes to wound. 10. Okay. It, it wounds. Okay, it is minus four, so it's on your invern. Four up and vulnerable safe. Four How much damage does this do? D6 plus six. I make the four plus <laughs> invulnerable save. Your psychic shotgun will never take down Kevin. Now we're on to the Terminators. Shooting everything at the Carnifexes. That have had their... No, we're doing this one first. I'm confusing it. We'll do this first because these have their options. So these guys will go into the Carnifexes. Right. And then so will the Demon Prince. But then these guys might have shots left over for Kevin. Okay, the Carnifexes with no armour right now. No armour at all. Because you hex them. Because I hex them. We'll begin with Gurul the Ill-Favoured. Because he took out a Horror Specs last time. He did. So D6 attacks with his his Astral Blast. Um, Nothing special about it so far. So Psychic... No. That's one attack. That's a bit more like him. Um, So he hits on a two. That's a hit. He's hit. It will uh, wound on probably a... Toughness uh, nine. Wound on a five. He doesn't no, wound. No. The sorcerer will do his other psychic thing. Again, what I'm really looking for are those critical hits, because they'll be lethal. Okay. But they don't give you, but they do hit. Both of them hit. Both of them hit, but now I'm going to need uh, strength four, so sixes. Sixes to wound. One wound gets through. It is minus three for a warp smite. Well, I don't get a save. That's true. stripped away my armour. One so wound. One wound. One wound. That one's down to six remaining. Soul Reaper Cannon Soul coming Reaper in. Soul Reaper Cannon hitting on threes. Okay. Okay. Strength six. Toughness nine. These aren't psychic, so that doesn't count. So uh, strength six, yeah. Wounding on fives. I think it's devastating. No wounds nothing, with the cannon. Nothing. So it's just going to be all the bunk bolt guns, which are hitting on threes and wounding on sixes. And two wounds came through, so one of the Carnifexes is down to four wounds remaining. And now that Demon Prince cat is going to sick a hairball all over him. <laughs> <laughs> on threes. threes. Ooh. Oh, that's only two hits. Strength six, toughness nine. Toughness strength five. One gets through again. It's two damage. Okay, one's on two wounds remaining. And then 
the Terminators unload everything into them. Coruscating Flames! Coruscating Flames? From the Sorcerer. From the Sorcerer. I can reroll once because you nominated them as their target. Okay. And um, that is a lethal hit because that is a psychic attack. Right. And this though is a strength of four, so it's going to require six. Sixes. Uh, it's a real thing, so one gets through, it's two damage. Okay, one's on, one's dead. Yay! One is dead, and I think, one minute, I've got a strap. Okay. Called Corrosive Viscera. Okay. So I don't need to roll his Deadly Demise, it just happens. It's nice. like acid for blood. But when he Deadly Demises, he only does one wound. Okay. And I'm out of range of Kevin. But it will put a wound on your Moitalith Vortex Beast, a wound on the Carnifex nearby, a wound on your Demon Prince, and a wound on your Thousand Suns uh, Terminators over there. Now, here's the thing. When a model goes, uh, each unit within six inches of that model suffers the Deadly Demise. So I'm not sure whether the Carnifex suffers a deadly demise because it's part of the unit, but it is a different model. But uh, it's sort of... Anyway, we're going to put a deadly demise wound on the Carnifex. But when you do deadly, deadly demise, do you hurt your own unit? I don't know. Comment below. So now the Terminators shoot in. They're hitting on fours. Let's start with the missiles. So okay. They're hitting on fours. Because you're shooting into combat. Yes. That is three hits. That's nice. Toughness nine. Toughness nine. Shred the missiles is still uh, ten. No, it's gone to ten. Yeah, they've made ten. Them. Great. So three to wounds. Three. You do three damage. So okay, could all happen. One. <laughs> That's three damage because no armor on there. He's on four wounds remaining. Here's the sorry for cannons. Fours. Reroll. There's no ones to reroll. No. And they're not lethal or magical or anything. No, but they're devastating. So. Yes. Five to wound. Sixes ignore art. Well, Ooh. everything ignores armor here. That is a dead Carnifex, yeah. which will deadly demise on a six. And he doesn't deadly demise. And the Carnifexes get wiped out. And that is the end of the shooting phase. I knew it was a bad idea sending those Carnifexes in there, but I'd hoped they'd be able to take down that Demon Prince. At least it's only on two wounds remaining. Yes. It's injured, it's reeling, and your Mutilate Vortex Beast over there was wiped out as well. But we're coming down over here. Yeah. We've got some Thousand Suns charging a zone throat. Uh, don't roll snake eyes. You don't roll snake eyes. <laughs> they the just get in there. And a demon prince charging a Tyrannifex. He's in. After the successful charges over here, because the Carnifex is a wiped out, the second demon prince is trying a long bomb charge into Kevin. Yeah, they're about nine inches. Okay. A bit of glory here. No and glory. that's a three. No glory. You have Unless you want to spend one. your one CP on re-rolling that. You probably want to keep it for something else. Hashtag don't listen to winners. So he's going to tear through him, and then he is. Then a very wounded demon prince open. I think the demon yes. prince. Why not? What are you going to spend the CP on? Okay. Come on, Zinch. Hear my prayer. Zinch no, definitely doesn't hear not. your prayer. That is a six. So now we're going on to the fight phase. I've only got one CP, so I can't interrupt. So we're going to start off with Araman smacking a neuro throat. Araman strikes out with his black star. Five attacks. On psychic weapons, these will still be lethal. Okay. As this, these two lethal hits on. He hits on twos. Nasty. So everything's gone through. Strength to seven. Toughness five. So there we uh, go. And it's minus one, three damage. Okay. Well, they have three wounds each and a four up in vulnerable saves. Okay. So I need to make all four, five in vulnerable saves. There you go, Araman. That's a dead neuro throat. Araman and his plucky band of Thousand Sons take that objective below that beautiful statue available from March of War. Uh, take that lovely statue there, that's cool. Uh, and then over here, Demon Prince. Demon Prince. Side swipes a Tyrannifex in the legs. Six attack strike. It's a sweet uh, the strike attack and it's psychic. Okay. So that's already a hit and these get through. He's strength eight. So that's 12. Fives. But two more go through and it's minus two, three damage. So four up saves. I make every single one except that one. Oops. And I'm going to do my once per battle thing to negate that one. Okay. So I don't take any damage. That went well. And I won't start interrupting here with the Tyrann effects. Instead, yeah, your Demon Prince just bounced. Let's come back to Kevin. Because I've already killed a monster. If I kill another monster, more points will bring it down in your turn. Very nice. Spending a CP on rampaging monstrosities, so he hits on twos and rerolls all hits with that CP. And he's strength nine. That's a ten. Two wounds. On fives, two wounds. Minus two. Five of pin buttons. No. Nope. Fell in both. That is six damage. How many wounds is he on left, this thing? Three left. Three left. <sighs> you feel no painting to do. 
And you have to do exactly three. Exactly three, which isn't enough to take... Which is enough it to is do. enough because you did that car effect explosion. Deadly Demise? I hope so. No. It no, doesn't Deadly proof. Demise. So in your turn, I managed to take out both your Oof. nuclear vortex beasts. Then we move down to the left flank for the fight back with the Tyrann effects against the Demon Prince and I failed to wound it. It's got one wound remaining and the Zangors put three wounds back on the Tyrann effects, which is pretty rude. So we're locked up in this corner down here, but you are behind enemy lines and that's an extra five points. And you're also extending the battle lines because right now the Thousand Sons with Araman hold on to this objective, the second in command hold on to this objective. And over here, the sorcerer that can put models back in yes. is holding on to this objective. Notice how I haven't shot the unit that can put models back in at I all. I did see that, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so you do pick up another 10 points. However, I've destroyed two monsters in a game player turn, your player turn. And that racks me up seven points as we go into Tyranids. Turn three? Turn three. It's three. It's 22 to 34 in favour of the Thousand Sons. They're 12 points in the lead and I need to extend my battle lines as well, something that I'm already doing, and get to the corner of the battle grid to get extra points investigating signals in turn three. And look, I've got a couple of unit of Raveners that can just pop up that I put them in the list just for this. Here we are after the Tyranids movement phase. I'm actually going to use this T-Vex to investigate signals back here. And it's been fact, even though these guys haven't got guns to be eligible to shoot, it's would you meet the criteria to shoot yeah. if you had some guns? So they're going to investigate signals. And Ravenous, all the way down that end, investigate signals. That's six points. Uh, meanwhile, I need to extend my battle lines and hold on to this objective, which I'm doing, and hold on to this objective. So maxing up maximizing the secondaries there and there's going to be a lot of pressure coming in from the tfx here and malaz cannons and the swarm lord kevin into your demon prince and the uh terminators Scar over here that's terminators. the one that's the one because he's got a three damage sword you see so yeah. i really want him to get in there with his three damage sword and shoot your demon prince who's only got two wounds remaining that's the plan now I could also technically investigate signals with this Tyrannifex down here because I'm wholly within nine of the corner and I am eligible to shoot. Okay. But there's a Demon Prince on one wound <laughs> and I really want him dead. Okay. Uh, I don't know if it's going to matter though because we're still going to... Hmm, I don't know if it... Well, it's going to feel good. Even if I... See, because I might be locked up for the rest of the game anyway. If it feels good, do it. So I'm going to shoot him. Let's okay. shoot him. Before you do that, I will spend, because I should do some what, starting. What, 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 what? What are you doing up. now? More trickery. More trickery. Stop it, Stylus. This is what? Lever of Fate, so I'm dropping my Cabal points down to two left. Right. Three left, so this costs me two points. Yes. At the start of any phase, when a saving throw is failed for a friendly Thousand of Sevens model within the Psyker, which is my Demon Prince, yes. I can re-roll that saving throw. You can so re-roll the saving throw if you fail it. That's my clutch. Okay, so it's threes, then it's heavies, twos, then he's injured, then he's in combat back to threes, but back to twos because of Crusher Stampede, okay? Makes sense. Simplified, not simple. Twos. I hit you both of the times. Strength 18. I wound you both of the times. Four up in turns. You fail them both, so you can re-roll <laughs> one of them. <laughs> Let's do it anyway, because he's dead. He passed it. And he takes nine damage. Oh, he demise? Does he demise? We don't demise. He doesn't demise. I killed the Demon Prince. A bit turned too late, but uh, he's gone. Uh, right. Araman. Araman's looking over his shoulder past that statue there and sees the Zoanthropes. You think you have magic power? <laughs> well, here is my psychic last cannons. And, uh, and I miss every time again. <laughs> Let's do psychic last cannons over here then. Three psychic last cannons into your Demon Prince on two wounds remaining. Okay. Doing anything about this one? Nothing I can do. Just got to cross my fingers. This time I hit twice. Okay. Strength, 12. Oh, can you do that? Command point. I wound once. Okay. <laughs> Four up in van. Yes. And you fail. I've got a command point. You've got one command point sat there. I mean, it'll really... Please, please don't pass. You could spray him, though. I could spray him. Are you thinking? I'm thinking. The I more could... you think, the more Rero is going to fail. Do I need that CP? Thing? I've never seen you think before. Normally, you're like a machine mind. It's like, <laughs> and then I'll do this, and then I'll do that. It's like a steel trap, a bear trap. I'm not going to spend the CP to... Uh... You're not? No, I'm going to spend the CP to do Destined by Fate. When I fail a saving throw, I turn the damage to zero. So it did 
Two damage. Three damage. Two damage. And then you turn that to zero. Yes. That's each. It's each for you. That's each for you. Right. One minute, one minute, one minute. I found out that Swarm Lord has a psychic attack, a torrenting psychic attack. Mm. So he's going to do that on your Demon Prince because it does do two damage. It's got two left and it's a D6 plus three attacks. Nice. Synaptic Pulse. Eight attacks. A strength five versus toughness ten. One wound. Minus one. So three up in three up armor safe. That's it. Okay, see the plan was dead demon prints go charging through kill terminators. Indeed. And that means the acid could have also washed into the terminators and give them a right shower. Yes. Melted some of them, but it looks like I'm gonna have to acid spray that demon prince. For sure. So let's acid spray the demon prince. Seven times. Fives. Uh, twice now, twice at minus two. Minus if you could two. fail one of these saves, it'd be lovely. We're four up. Fail you one. fail one of them. Two damage. That's two damage. There you go. He's gone. It took that was. It took some work. It took a a lot of work. Do I deadly demise? Uh, please don't. Thank no, you. you don't deadly demise. And then we're going to come over here and put some death spitters into Araman's unit. Just a little tinkle. We did the shots. Araman's unit has a little bit of cover. No damage was caused. So now we're on to the charge phase. Kevin is going to go in against your Terminators, and he makes the charge. Kevin, massive impact, one CP, roll a bunch of dice, and he does three mortal wounds to the Terminators. Then he strikes out with his Bone Saber, spending the CP so I can re-roll hits again on twos, re-roll in that one. Bone Saber's a strength nine, their toughness five. So it would normally be threes to wound, but the trickery. And my implacable guardians, when right. an attack made against the unit is the strength is greater than the toughness, you subtract one from the wound roll. Okay. And also, it wasn't breaking your flow, but that thing I did where I can re-roll a saving throw yeah. is at the start of any phase. I've got enough Cabal points, so I'll do it again for that unit. So <laughs> That's my last of my Cabal points, but I get another re-roll. Oh dear. So instead of threes to wound, fours to wound. Yes. But here's another rule that I forgot. <laughs> These are twin linked. Twin linked. Twin linked. He's got he's got like four pairs of swords. That, that is fair enough. So four to wound. Okay, I do that many wounds. The first saving throw that you fail is ignored, right? It's not ignored. I get to reroll it. You get to reroll it. So, so okay. five, four plus invaluable saves. Each failed save kills a terminator, uh, and that's four dead terminators. I'll reroll this one. Uh, that's pretty cocked. And that so is three, three dead. dead Terminators with his much massive impact as well. He wiped out four. Yes. That's quite fruity. I like That's it. Pretty good. Then we quickly came down to this end of the battlefield, Tyranifex versus Zangors. Yep. We put a wound on each. And now we're back to the Scarabacol Terminators fighting Kevin. These are psychic attacks. We'll go with the force weapons first because right. they are still in the, the psychic doodads, which means they're going to be lethal hits if they're critical. Sounds painful. It is painful. So five attacks for the Terminator Sorcerer, the leader of the unit first, hitting okay. on threes. He hits all the time. So no lethals. No lethals, though. Uh, his strength six. So Toughness ten. Yikes. So three get through. AP. AP minus one, D3 damage. Okay. Minus one. He normally has a two up safe. So threes. One gets through. That two does damage. two wounds onto him. Kevin's on seven remaining. Okay, the next guy is the, the lower down. He's the aspiring sorcerer. He has four attacks with his psychic force weapon. It's pretty much the same apart from the same. So these two miss. But that, that one's lethal. a lethal hit. Okay. That one goes through as well. So it's minus two, again, D3. Minus one, sorry. Minus, minus one, one so threes. And make them both. So now we... Then five remaining Terminators with Kopeshes. Three attacks each. Fifteen attacks coming in hot. Hitting on three, so these aren't psychic. They're not psychic. No. So sixes don't mean jack. They don't jack. Mean nothing. Okay. And they are strength five, so Ooh, I'm going to be... sixes to wound. Sixes to wound. Of which there that are is four of them. Four sixes. And it is minus two. Two minus... damage. Okay, so I need four up and buns. Technically, this could kill him. It doesn't kill him. It just puts two more wounds on him. And you know what? That makes him even more angry. Now he's got plus one to hit and plus one to wound. Marvellous. And at the end of that turn, I've extended my battle lines and pick up a bunch of points for investigating signals. Down here, we have Araman, somewhat isolated next to a statue, but uh, I've, you've noticed that I'm not going anywhere near him because he's, <laughs> he's very scary. 
Then on this side of the battle grid, you've got your Terminators locked in combat and this unit down here, yes. which is the one with the malefic crystal that can dance around all over the place. That one right there. So these ones do have a redeploy option. So yes. you could shoot across to the other side of the battle grid if you want to. There's still a Battleshock test to take on those Zangors over there. But apart from that, you are on one, two, three objectives. As we go into Thousand Suns, turn three? Four. Four? Four. Four. Did you go first? I did. Four. The Thousand Suns are up to a massive 59 points to the Tyranids 33, but they are running out of assets. Well, they run out of steam entirely. And they need to get a tempting target, an objective that I nominate. That one's going to be tough and engage on all fronts. So the Thousand Suns might be 26 points in the lead, but they only have four units left. And one of them at the end of the movement phase is staying locked up with the Swarm Lord here. And the other unit of Zangors has been locked up with the Tran effects for the whole game. But that's a pretty good move. It kept him out of the fight. What you did do, however, is move around Aramon's flaming unit to get in range of the Zoanthropes. And you jump back there with the Malefic Crystal. And that's the bot gun unit. And because they jump back there, you're engaging in three table quarters yes. for three points. And that objective there, they'll put the blue dice on as a tempting target. You're not going to get that this mm. turn. So you're pulling ahead on the primaries. But this turn, you're only going to pick up three on the secondaries. And there's only a couple of units that can actually shoot. This unit in engagement range cannot shoot in engagement range unless they're pistols. That's quite interesting. So, big unit in the backfield, and Araman's Flamers of Doom. So you're doing some more shenanigans. Warp Trickery, you know the Swarm Lord has the ability to double the cost of any stratagem. Yes, I did that. I definitely did that. Yeah, that was clever. So you did the stratagem that makes these bolt guns into psychic weapons. Yes. However, I have uh, a Cabal point. Um, right. I spend six Cabal points on this ritual. And I could get a stratagem for zero CP. Oh. So I've turned your two CP into zero CP. So Thanks. I've got around it. Okay. And that They now means... have psychic weapons, so they'll be shooting them with lethal hits. It might be overkill, it might not, but I want to clear you off that objective to push you onto okay. one objective. Well, then, yeah, then I'll only hold on to this objective here. Yeah. Okay, so let's shoot some guns. I love all the trickery, by the way. Thousand Sons is definitely an army for people who love pulling rabbits out of hats or seek <laughs> global domination. Yeah, or just look like the look at their opponent's faces when it just drops a little bit. And they, Have uh... you ever pulled a rabbit out of a hat? I pushed a rabbit into a hat before. Okay. What about global domination? Is that is that a hobby, pastime? Yeah. Not with rabbits and hats, no. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? We're doing uh, Guron will be first with his Astral Blast. Okay. Can kill Harris Mix, can deal nothing. It's D6 shots. For one shot. Okay. Uh, hits on two, he and hit. that is a lethal hit. AP. Minus two. Six up save. I make my save. Okay, switching, switching to the warp flame, uh, the, no, the warp smite attack. Smite attack. Two. Um, Do they miss? They both miss. Brilliant. Well done, guys. This uh, might not work. It might not work. This is this is so cannon, it's not psychic. So right. Of course I get two sixes from it. Uh, but it's going to wound on threes. Yes. And devastating wounds. Not that they, no. I can reroll ones. In fact, I can reroll everything because you're on an objective. Okay. Uh, but I'll, I'm not going to push on that because they've already hit. So that's a devastating wound. And the AP, AP of Sol Reaper. Minus, two, minus one. For minus Reaper. one. They changed it. So three five up saves. And three wounds get through. One of them dies. That was the extra wound with the devastating wounds. And then these are all the infernal bolters. Yes, and these are lethal. Okay. So threes to hit. You're rerolling ones? <laughs> They're so lethal. Nothing's up. It's rerolling ones to wound. Oh, oh. One lethal hit gets One lethal hit. Is that it? That's it. Okay. These are where I get to reroll one though because it's to wound. Okay. So you're hitting on fives though. It's not going to plan. Okay, so these... Actually, don't matter. There, that was a six. I get to reroll everything because right. it's on an objective. If you're not on objective, I reroll ones. If you are within range, if the target is within range of victim marker, I can reroll the wound roll. Okay. So they got through. Okay, so that's five wounds so far. I need five, isn't that? So none of these did get through. No. Okay. Rerolling the wound roll. Okay, so that's a bit better. That's that... two more. Three that's more. Three more. What's the AP? The AP is minus one. Minus one. So a bunch of five up saves. Yes. They have three. Drop the dice and count. They have three wounds each. Okay. Good luck. Oh, you did it. You kill one and put one down to two wounds remaining. And I've pulled from this side 
which is going to make the charge into them impossible. All I need to do next is pass a battle shock test to make sure that I guarantee still getting this objective here. One minute, we come round to the last thing left to fire. All the flame is going up at them, but our man, technically, he can see. We got down and had a look. Yep. He's on that very high base. He can see over the statue. He can try and snipe them out. And so can he exalt the aspiring sorcerer. They've both got psychic powers. Yes, but he's down on foot. Can the sorcerer actually see him? No, just arrow man. It's just, just arrow man. One, one shot. shot. Do not miss your chance to blow. This okay. opportunity comes once. How many? What? What's going on? It's the psychic stalk. It's one shot. Okay, and it, it hits. hits. It's uh, strength six. It, it wounds. wounds. It's minus one d six damage. Well, I've got cover. You got cover. So, you're saying there's a chance. So fifty fifty. Four up. Good luck. Command point. Oh. Yay. Next, all the flamers into zone throats. This number of hits. auto hits. Oh, that's great. Fives to wounds with all these flamers. And I can reroll ones because that's the rubric's ability. Okay. It's a nice little ability. Okay. So we roll some ones. Here we are after the rerolls. A bunch of four up saves to make, and that kills one and puts one down to two wounds remaining. And the final is the warp smite coming in. Okay. Uh, both miss. <laughs> And that is the end of the shooting phase, killing three of the models there. No charges being declared. So we're coming back to Kevin, who's attacking the Terminators. I don't have any CP. So this is just straight hits. Is there any minuses and things? Yes, it's going to be minus one to wound because I imagine you're stronger than I am. Yeah, so twos to hit you. Um, he's not below half strength yet on five, actually. Okay. So he doesn't get plus one to wound. So it is still... Fours to wound you because of your thing, but it is all twin linked, which is good because that's only two wounds so far. And so before that, I was popping on the sorry. popping on the what now? Popping on the thing that allows me to reroll a failed save. Okay, no problem. Okay. You've got four saves to fail, please. <laughs> four ups. You didn't fail. Well, you failed one. You no, did what? fail one. You did fail one. Okay. The thing didn't help. And now, now you get to fight back. Please don't kill Kevin. I like Kevin. Five attacks. Okay. Psychic force weapon hitting on threes. Yes. And that are lethal hits. Okay. Two lethal hits and strength. Strength is six. Toughness ten. So nothing. I'm... We have two psychic weapon wounds come through. That was minus one, right? Minus one. So threes. <gasps> How much damage? G3. Is it? It is. I don't have any CP. Okay. Let's hope. He's got five wounds remaining. He's got, He's got two wounds <laughs> oh. remaining. Same again with the deputy, only one attack fewer. Right. No force, uh, no uh, lethal hits this time. And, and no hits at all. No wounds. Because that's Ooh. one, two, three, four regular guys. That is 12 attacks. 12 attacks. Can the Scarab Colt do it? Freeze to hit. It's two damage, or maybe it's one. Yeah. And this and has got one. lethal stuff? These are not lethal because they're not psychic. Ooh. So it's just. So fives to wound? Indeed. There's three get through. Right. And it's minus one, uh, minus two, two damage. So what you're saying is, I need to pass all three of these saves. You do. 50-50 chance. Good luck, Kevin. Times three. Kevin's dead. Bad luck, Kevin. Does he deadly demise? He doesn't deadly demise and you have sunk my battleship. We went from this conflict down here to this corner with the Tfex and the Zangors. One wound done to each other one more time. And that is the end of Thousand Suns. Turn four, you've got an extra three points for engaging on all fronts. Yes. Getting your score up to 62 points. I'm gonna to need to tap pass a Battle Shocks test at the start of my turn down here with this warrior to make sure I score those five points. Yes. But he's a synapse thing, so I roll 3d6 because he's in range of him and I hold, so I do get those five points there. And I do get the five points over here for the second objective that I'm on as we're going to Tyranid's turn four. One last thing, at the end of your opponent's turn, if a Ravenous are not in engagement range of the enemy models, they can go back in to strategic reserve. It's 43 to 62 for the Thousand Suns, and I need to engage in all fronts and secure No Man's Land. Here we are after the Tyranid's movement phase and the Ravenous popped in back in over there and popped in over here, which gets me engaged on all fronts. I'm in all four table quarters, that's five points. And it also gets me secure no man's land because I've got this objective and I've got this objective down here. You've got 40 points on the primary. 
it caps out at 50 points on the primary and you're on currently on one two objectives so the plan is to try and get the terminators off this objective here with las cannons from the zoanthropes and the zoanthropes and the tyrannifex with his acid spray and i actually moved this big tfex across as well so he could thread the needle and thump a big shot into them so let's do that let's go on to the shooting phase this unit of zoanthropes firing in at your terminators and a hit once and a wound once. Okay, we discussed before the shooting phase started, I spent my final two cabal points on the thing that allows me to re-roll after okay. my first failed save. So re-rolling it now. Still no, failed. and it's D6 plus one damage. And that nukes a terminator. Okay. And then we have squad number two holding on to my objective. Um, they're gonna fire in as well. They hit twice. Okay. Strength 12, they wound twice. Four up and vulnerable saves. You make one fail one. Another one nuked. D6 plus one damage, so no. only tickles one and puts Ooh. one down to one wound remaining. Uh, so we'll do the Stinger Salvo from the Acid Spray t first. This is on twos because it's injured. And wounds on fours because strength five versus toughness five is equal. That is five wounds, five two up saves to tickle off that last wound. Eight two up. That tickles off that last wound and puts one down to two wounds remaining, which is good because the acid spray is two damage and it's D6 plus six shots for 11 shots. I've been rolling hot with my acid spray. Spraying acid for days, yo. Forced to wound though because um, you're minus one to wound thing. Yep. That many, that is. Seven saves. Minus two. Four up seven. Two damage each. Two damage each. I fail two of them. So that kills that one and that puts that one down to one wound. Okay. On the boss man. So now we're going to shoot a Tyranifex straight down through at them here. I moved. So I'm hitting on threes. Nah! <laughs> Do I want to CP that? Do I want to CP that? Does it change anything? Because he's got no CF5, mm -hmm. so it goes charging in. I need that one dead. I don't know. If I kill... Hmm. I don't think I can do this. I don't think I got this. I've got crushing charge as well. Mortal wounds when I go flying in there. That's probably more reliable. We'll do that instead. Okay. That is the end of my shooting phase. Instead, the Tranifex is going to charge. And we make the charge. Thump. We go flying in there. And we're going to do mortal wounds on fours. Okay. Crushing charge. I do a mortal wound. That does kill the aspiring source. So the reason he's dying first is I need this guy to have the objective. So you still hold the objective. Yeah, and I'm going to have to take him off first as a bodyguard unit. So it doesn't matter if he lives or dies, he can't die. But if he dies, are you in range of the objective? No, that's the thing. He must live somehow. Okay. Well, you get two up saves against all these attacks. Okay, that'd be nice. But they hit you on twos because I'm a little bit injured. Okay. A strength eight. I'm still minus one to wound you, right? Yes. So it is forced to wound. Two wounds. AP dash, two damage a time. Snake Eyes will kill him. He holds firm. And then you get to fight back. Then we did the fight back with your Terminators and you took two more wounds off this Tyrannifex here. Then we remembered I didn't shoot with my Tyrannifex over here. So I killed two in Araman squad. Indeed. And then we rounded out turn four with the fight of the century. One more time. Zangors versus Tfex. Another wound caused on either side. I feel like... We're going to fight here for eternity. In that round is. 14, I'll have it. In round 14. That is the end of turn four. The Tyranids have engaged on all fronts. They have secured no man's land. But at the start of turn five, the Thousand Sons will max out their primaries so long as they pass a Battleshock test here. And I think their leadership six because there's a HQ dude in there with them. There's a HQ. Araman's unit, fine. He's not below half strength yet, let yet. So, and you fail I guess your battle shock CP test. One to automatically <laughs> pass that battle shock test. Yes. So at the start of turn five, you do that. You max out the primaries. Now let's find out what the orders are. Seventy-two points to fifty-three for the Thousand Sons. They've got to defend their stronghold. Make sure that Tyrannifex doesn't break through until the end of my turn to get that extra five points in the area to now. Get wholly within six inches of the center and make sure that there's no enemies within six inches of the center or three for less points. 
So, the Thousand Suns are 19 points in the lead. This unit are staying locked up with the Tfex, trying to lock down this stronghold, defend it as much as possible. But in the backfield, the unit that hasn't even taken a shot at yet is moving forward this way. And I think the plan is to shoot one way and charge another. So these zone tropes are in this ruin here, so they can be targeted. And then charge me, kill me, get off of me off that objective there. Yes. And that's a five point swing. Yes. Now for area denial, we put a dice right down in the center of the battle grid. At first glance, it seems like you can't get there. It seems impossible. But zinch trickery. Indeed. What's the zinch trickery? I've got Aaron Man here. Yes. They can advance. They can advance. That's not far enough, Stylus. It's not far enough. But then they can also use uh, Warp Surge Warp to get a normal move and hopefully get them in. So with a good enough advance, I can get them close, spend my Cabal Ritual and get them in the centre. Nice. Let's see how far you get for the advance. Four. So that's nine. That's a nine inch move so far. So with the Cabal Ritual at the start of the shooting phase, the Thousand Suns take area denial. Now that's three points. It is. If you kill those zoanthropes, you get an extra two points because there, there won't be any enemy units within six inches of the center as well. Can they still shoot after they've done that? Can they still shoot? Uh, they make a they, normal they, move. They could, but because they advanced to get there, they can't. Oh, yeah. If they've moved and made normal move, they could, yeah. they can't. Yeah. So you really need to kill them. It's these guys here. With that unit back there. Yeah. I'm not saying it all relies on my Timony and Lucky Sorcerer. Yes. He's leading the way. Yes. Gurren will do it. He, uh, he's starting with D6 shots with his Astral Blast. Okay. Three, three shots. Okay, three it's better shots. than the one that he's been getting. He's improving. Okay. Good luck. This hits on a two. Does it? Oh, it's a bit unlucky. Hits, okay. Is it Psychic? That's lethal, right? It's Psychic. So that's a lethal hit. Right. And this is a six, so... Three's to wound. Three's to wound. Doesn't wound. Okay. Four up and vulnerable safe. I make my four up and vulnerable safe. Good work. Okay. Next up are the Warp Smite attacks. Okay. Uh, they both hit, they were psychic, but they don't explode. Right. Uh, these are anti infantry. Are they infantry? Are they yes, they are infantry. Wounded off fours. So That's one a wound. wound. And a rubric can re roll ones to wound. I can't so, see it. And Two wounds. That is a devastating wound. Oh. It's only one. Um, and this one is minus three for warp smite. So four up and vulnerable save plus a wound. Uh, that's two wounds. Is one of them is injured? He was. Okay, one of them's fallen. That leaves one remaining. Put the remaining now. shots to okay. gun him down and get you and the last extra two okay. points that you'll get this <laughs> game. Good luck. So we for cannon. Yeah. Hitting on threes. Right. There are no rerolls. The guy actually you could have put you couldn't have seen them now. No. no rerolls. Only two hits. Only two hits. Wounding on no Max. wounds. Okay, can't you re roll them? Because they're not anything. You're Cases. gonna have to do it with the infernal bolt guns. 16 shots to do this. There's not psychic. There's no trickery here. Just the old-fashioned bot gun. Well, Ooh. you say old-fashioned bot gun. <laughs> the old-fashioned bot gun loaded your with magical bullets. Your one set fire, yeah. Magical bullets. Tough as five. That's right, so we're winning on fives, but I can reroll ones. Okay. Well, you're going to need to reroll a couple of ones. Yep. I think I'm getting him. No. Nope. Three ways. Fail all three. Minus one. So I'll three. try not to fail all three. Oh, I don't so fail all three. Okay. One takes a wound. You'll still get three points for area denial, just not the five points for area denial. We do have a charge phase, however. We're going to go into him. These guys want to charge that lone warrior, and they roll an 11. That's really high. They're going to go flying in there. And at the end of the fight phase, that lone warrior on two wounds remaining couldn't withstand those bajillion attacks and gets cut down. Then we come across here to my Tyrann effects, trying to jump up and down on the terminators here. I will be spending that thing that allows me to reroll again. On twos, okay. Uh, fours to wound. Two wounds, two full armor saves. No, make and it. you make the saves. Now you can fight back. This is a terminator sorcerer. Yep. Uh, that's a lethal That's hit. a lethal. Uh, that's a lethal. One lethal, one needs to wound on a six. That gets through. I make the save. And then the final Johnny with the Procopesh. Kopesh, they both miss. They're getting a bit tired. They've had a rough day. Right. Does wound? That's a strength four. Strength five. Strength five. Doesn't That's wound. Doesn't wound. Toughness 12. Oof. Okay, we're going to go back, back down the here point. to the fight with the Zangors one more time. I kill a Zangor. They don't manage to wound the Tfex this time. And that is the end of Thousand Suns, turn five. You have maxed out the primaries. He still somehow got four units remaining and pushed me off of that objective there, which means at the start of turn five, 
I'm only going to pick up five points. Oh no, five points for being on this one and I'm on this one as well. Don't you I'm going to the end of your turn. I do score at the end of my turn. It's still a chance. So I can get 15 on it's the primary. Still a play, yeah. Because when you go second and you're defending that stronghold, right? Indeed. So if I get a good run with the Raveners around there, I could potentially run and jump onto it. And at the end of your turn, these guys might as well disappear back into the. They'll burrow back underground as we're going to Tyranids turn five. Right, before I do anything, it's 75 points to 53. Yes. Yes. If I pick up 15 points on my primaries, it'll be 75 68. So the Raveners that disappeared can just jump back in and appear on that one, like that. So that's 75 68, because I'm on this one and this one. That's if I stay on this one. Because if I don't do something about stopping you defending that stronghold, you're going to get another five points. That is true. So uh, 75, 68, which means there's seven points in it. Here are my cards. Are you ready? Good luck. Cleanse. Do actions on objectives in no man's land. And you get three VP for each one you do. So, do so this one could do one and that one could do one, which is six points. What's 75, 68. That would put one point in it. Okay. And no prisoners. Just kill something. Okay, okay, okay. We had lots of thinking. We had okay. lots of thinking. It was, it was Cleansing objectives it. caps out at five points. Yeah. 73 to 75. Yes. Okay? Okay. So if I kill one thing yeah. and stop you defending that, yes. I win. Yes. So these Raveners are cleansing this one. Okay. These Raveners are cleansing that one. Okay. In order to kill this thing, I need to shoot it. Now, is Acid Spray Tfex better than Laz Cannons and Laz Cannons? Maybe I should leave the Acid Spray Tfex, because if I leave the Acid Spray Tfex in there, it's D6 plus 6 auto hit, strength 6, minus 2, 2 damage. And to be fair, I just need to kill that guy. Yes. And if he dies, you're not defending the stronghold. No. Or shoot at them with Laz Cannons. I think in shooting at the last cannons is cooler though. So that's okay. what we're doing. We're okay. shooting at them with the last cannons. Okay. okay? Yeah. If he dies, you're not in range, you're not defending that stronghold, and I've killed a unit and I win. Yes. Kill this one Terminator <laughs> and I win the game by three points. This is it now. This is it. This Are is you it. doing any shenanigans? I'm doing the thing where I can reroll an armor safe because right. that's the last of my cabal points. Okay. I have one CP left, which I could technically reroll. A re that I haven't made. Okay. But that's all I've got. I've got one re-roll and another re-roll. Psychic glass cannons for the win. Here, okay, we, go. here we go. Zone throats coming in hot. Threes. I hit once. Okay. Once. I'm going to CP re-roll it. Okay. Okay. I hit once. Strength 12. Doesn't wound. Rupture cannon time. Rupture cannon time from my Tyrannifex over there, firing in to try and kill this guy. Twos to hit him. I hit him both of the times. Are they still minus one to wound? They're still minus one to wound. So it's threes to wound you. Okay. I wound once. Okay. So you're saying I've got a four up save. Four up and vulnerable save. And this is the last of the shots you got? That's, that's, I think that's it. So yes. this, is, this is game. This is game. A four up is game. A four up is game. <laughs> okay. Win or lose, four up. I think you've got a re roll with a CP. I do, I do. Here we go. <sighs> and you pass the save, which means you defend that stronghold, which means I don't get no prisoners because they needed to stay on there to cleanse. They needed to stay on there to cleanse. I had to fall back. Would the acid spray have done it? It would have been at 10 shots. It would have wounded on fours. This many four up saves. The acid would, spray would have done I it. I would have then used my cabal to reroll this. No, so what we're saying is the acid that spray. That's no down to two. Right. I'd use my stratagem to reroll this. You'd have done it. I'd have done it. You'd have done it. So forward Valuable back. Valuable lesson. Give the Tyrant effect. <laughs> but last cannons are cooler. Oh. Anyway, at the end of all of that, 72 to 75 or 82 to 85 with painting standard. And this is the way the world ends. What do we think of the Crusher Stampede, big monsters coming forward? Well, here's the funny thing, is I set up 
to take that big crusher stampede and try and knock it out. And I took out a lot of it. You did. It was that was the last bit of the stampede, wasn't it? That was the last. Well, and also the two T Vexes that haven't done much in the back corner. But well, yeah, because yeah. they were they weren't part of the, the thrust. So they they know, weren't stampeding. They weren't stampeding. These these guys were scary. These uh, these last cannon with They did miss sometimes. I'm thinking next time I'm going to bring him in units of six because mm. then that's six last cannons coming out. That's nice. The thing about them is they're mo- they're not monsters. They're yeah. infantry. So as soon as you lock them up in close combat combat yeah we're not shooting last cannons yes and there's nothing in the book that allows you to fall back and shoot or do anything like that so yes. they do really need to stay back yeah i like the ravelers again in a, in a unit of these big monsters yeah. having little poppy up ones is what you need because these again they don't they can't dominate the borders too and it's normally no can't. to be fair they did get me engage in all fronts they did get me investigate signals yeah. they got me a couple of little points there wasn't a little bug anywhere on the battle grid. No swarm. What was yeah. it like going up and, and there's no swarm? No endless multitude. Well, that was unusual. Again, it, it's tough, but you kind of um, kind of grit your teeth and take it. Funny yeah. my big monsters did nothing in the whole game. Last game, they were king. Yeah, and this game, again, if you roll badly, I guess. And um, I've also learned, again, the, the tagging big monsters, that doesn't work. I should know that. Um, well, it kind of worked. Well, because they put a wound on him, it took off the effectiveness of taking a, a to hit off him. So that's the question. <laughs> that point. I did. So yeah, that was that was there, but it kind of didn't work because you'd run out of things to shoot at. Yeah. Um, I think again, yeah, the units of Rubicar, even though you ignored that one completely, um, they they stuck in there. Um, that one never took a shot. Araman was the warlord of this battle grid, and he walks out there with five Rubicar remaining. Yeah. I mean, the Terminator is second in really command. In there. He's there. With, yeah. So, so it's um, the Rubicar, so the Demon Princes. Again, it's very hard to keep them hidden when there's a, you know, they can't be shielded. You've got the strats where you can negate the damage coming in, but in a, in a game when you can really just take anything out. I like the horsey one giving everyone stealth. Yeah, well, that never came into them because you ignored that bit. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not bad. And again, there are strats to reduce damage to zero and this kind of stuff, but that yeah. means you're putting a lot of effort to keeping the demon princes alive. Is there, um, like Thousand Suns, I love the way they play with the Cabal points and all that sort of stuff, though. But is there some kind of GCC that you can get which helps <laughs> teach you how to play Thousand Suns better? Well, I think, again, in the sequencing of this game, I may have, again, missed a few steps because some is at the start of the phase, some is it when you take the hit, some is, you know, you've got to do it. So I think again, what? another line on the spreadsheet is needed. So it's split up all over the place. Yeah, the Cabal points, some is that you do it now, some is it you do it now, but activate it later in the phase and this kind of stuff. So I may have slipped up occasionally on, on when we sequence this. I think that's why you need a GCC. I I mean, I think the only qualification I've got is I swam down and got the brick. I got yeah. that one. Did you wear your pyjamas at the time? I did. Well, that's I, uh, double points. I, I turned the pyjamas into a handy life raft. <laughs> so if ever I fall into the local pond in Swindon and I happen to have my pyjamas on at the time, <laughs> I'll be okay. But they are good. Again, the uh, the psychic thing. I only used the one psychic thing. I might have gone devastating wounds in the end to try and take them out. But generally, lethal hits against big monsters seemed the way forward. But if you'd done swarms, I could have done sustained hits. And done it that way. But you do need the, the ability to turn bolt guns into psychic weapons to get the full heft of that. Yeah. But if you look at the de- the two demon princes I had were about the same cost as a Magnus, and I think Magnus on the table would have been a bit different, very different prospect. So those two demon princes are the same as Magnus. And on the table, I don't think they're the same as Magnus. No, no, no. Magnus, you fear when you put him down last term, I felt Magnus. Yeah. It wasn't a pleasant feeling. <laughs> so as someone who's played Thousand Suns since they were hatched. Yes. Um, are you? Are you? What do you think? What do we think about Thousand Sons in this edition? Still good? Still good. I mean, they, they can do the business and they still feel right. Again, the um, the core of it is still the rubrics and the scarabs, which is how it should be. Yep. You still, again, you want the sorcerers in the unit because that really makes a difference. Again, when, they, when on their day, they can really push out a lot of wounds and that's that's good too. Yep. And they've got the tricks. Again, you, the fact that I was able to use a character's ability to gain a cabal to use a strat to save a character... That's quite, that's quite thousand cents. Yeah, they still had plenty of trickery which upped their resilience here or there. And of course, having a cabal thing which just takes away a saving throw from a unit is beef. Yeah. yeah. Particularly when that saving throw is a two up yes. on a big nasty monster. Yeah. And particularly combined with the fact that, hey, all my stuff's suddenly lethal. So it does combine very well some of the tricks and tricks that the thousand sons can pull off. In 10th edition. I had fun playing the Stampede. I'm not sure, to be honest, if it's better than just getting the lethal hits or the sustained hits one, the basic one from the index cards. And I tell you, I really missed rapid regeneration. (laughs) Having a feel no pain on my monsters. Taking out that Psychophage early was the way to go, I think. Yes. When he blew up, he made everything else better. 
Um, yeah. I wonder again about the T-Flexes. Again, if you're facing, maybe you've got tanks to face against, you want them to take things out. Yeah. But if you trade them up for just, I don't know, more Screamer Killers, yeah. having sort of two thrusts coming towards you. I think the way to go is two Psycho Vages and like triple Screamer Killers and a couple of Harrow Spexes. So you've got a Psycho Phage and they're just rushing forward and all that lot isn't that many points. Mm. And then they have some big guns and some synapse in the backfield job done. Yeah. I wouldn't worry too much about the synapse of the big creatures crushing forward because you're not necessarily going to need to spend any CP on a strat if they've automatically got plus one to hit or plus one to wound. Yeah, um, yeah you could definitely get a bigger and bigger and bigger stampede of monsters if you want to. And I feel like if you did full-on stampede with monsters, it might feel like going up against Imperial Knights where there's a lot of the guns in your army are just going to be wounding on sixes and things. Yeah, yeah. It's if you don't have access to lethal hits or stuff, it could be a bit tough. Yeah, but it's a it's a it's a fun one to again. Uh, yeah, if you don't like painting hundreds and hundreds of little bugs, but you like a great big alien, go that's a good them. point. That's a good point. If you're new to the hobby and you only want twelve models or fifteen models, then get twelve or fifteen really big monsters from the Tyranid range. You can build a list with that now, yeah. so long as you don't have more than three of anything. <laughs> Throw them at your opponent and laugh maniacally <laughs> and watch them squirm because it would be actually quite strong. Anyway, that was really good. I really like games which come down to the last dice roll. Didn't know which way it was going to go. Hero hanging in here, just holding on to that last objective. And uh, so thanks for coming down, Stylus, one more time. That's we hope pleasure. everyone enjoyed this battle report. Urban Mats is the mat. Game mat, no, not game mat. March of War UK <laughs> is the scenery in the middle and that stuff there. And um, thank you to all my subscribers and all my members uh, for helping keep the lights on. Love you guys. And uh, yeah, be good, be nice, be kind. Happy Wargaming. <laughs>